Hey, everybody. Well, welcome back to another live stream. I'm super glad to see y'all. Adjusted the time a little bit. I, uh, I'm actually in Ha Long Bay. Yeah. So, but got a beer, beer Hanoi in this case. We're making it work. But um, anyway, hey, we got a fun topic today. Uh, retirement. Yeah. The whole tropical dream thing. Yeah, Henry. Oh, good to see you again, buddy. <laughs> well, um, anyway, uh, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, some people are going to tell you it's overrated. Some people tell you it's just right rated. Um, I don't know. I like it. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, let's see. I'm trying my best to get this all together. We'll get it. But anyway, uh, retirement related stuff. Um, look, uh, the reason I like chatting with all you guys, uh, is I want to give you the real perspective. Um, another way of saying it is the no bullshit part. Okay. And I was trying to think of where to start on this one, but I think the best place let's, uh, Hey, Nicholas, good to see you, buddy. <laughs> Um, anyway, the, uh, best place to start. Oh yeah. Henry, where is 10 line? Um, miscellanea. Uh, maybe she's down getting food. Maybe she's managing bags. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Will she be around later? Probably. Yeah, we'll turn her up. She's with me no matter what, but, um, anyway, um, first things first. I have been traveling around the world a lot and I met a lot of people who have already retired. Okay, so um, I can speak on behalf of hundreds and hundreds of people. Now, um, I wanted to kind of start here. I, was, uh, I went to Mexico, uh, Acapulco, Mexico, um, about 25 times. So as you'd expect, I met a lot of different people there, and uh, I saw a lot of the same faces. Yes, there's one gentleman um, that I ended up seeing for four or five times. And he, uh, or every year, I should say, I didn't see him the uh, seventh time. He basically retired, made a lot bunch of money with his uh, independent business, and uh, ultimately um, decided to move to Mexico, uh, drink cocktails every day, and sit on the beach and live the good life. Basically, everything that uh, is, what do you say? Everything he was dreaming for, he attained it. Cool. But at the same time, all this sounds great. Uh, he became an alcoholic. Let's face it. You sit around and drink 10 margaritas a day, and then you can effectively order any of the food you want, go to any beach you want, hang with anyone you want. What happens next? Well, uh, he became morbidly obese and a hardcore alcoholic and ridiculously lazy, he was bored out of his mind in about a month. Uh, then he started like contracting on the phone and kind of working with folks back at uh, back in the home base and trying to stay busy a little bit and feel less less like a piece of shit. But every time I saw him, he was bigger and bigger, dumber and dumber, lazier and lazier until he died. Found out, yeah, he didn't show up one time. He was dead. Retirement kills people. Okay, it's very dangerous. I'm from Austin, Minnesota originally, in the Hormel industry. Uh, I was based in Austin, Minnesota. When they, people retire, they usually give them about a year and a half. Year and a half and they're dead. Uh, my uh, great-grandfather retired eight months. He was dead. Uh, yeah, you sit in a chair. You sit in a lazy boy and watch TV all day. You take a guy who's otherwise productive, had a purpose, knew what he was doing, all of this and that. And uh, sit him in front of a TV to do nothing? Yeah, uh, you're going to die. That's all there is to it. So this whole concept of um, wanting to retire and have some sort of idealized life is bullshit. And it's a shit plan. It's a shit plan. Okay? When you look at, like, retirement advice, you know, pamphlets, or if you type in online, retirement or anything like that, inevitably you're going to see a picture of two white-haired husband and wife wearing white clothes, 
walking on the beach holding hands together. Inevitably. Yeah, send me a message if you know exactly what kind of stock image that I'm talking about here. But yeah, it's bullshit. It's all bullshit. Um, for a few reasons. Number one, you don't got to be 80 to go to a beach. B, those white clothes that they typically are pictured in suck. Uh, C, I would rather be at the beach uh, in my 20s, 30s, and 40s than when I'm like 80. I mean, the sex is better. Uh, for example. <laughs> you know, plus, you don't got to be a millionaire retired in order to go to the beach. Shit. You know, you can go there now. You know, uh, so again, about a lot of this stuff, I think a lot of it is just bullshit. Um, another example that's worth bringing up here it, to keep everything all in proper context. Um, my um, uh, next door neighbor when I was growing up, uh, Rod, wanted to have an RV and travel around America, you know, in his golden years. And he focused on this one dream, worked his ass off forever. Good, 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 good. Everything about this is great. Never got into debt. Bought his house in cash. Bought his, all of his cars in cash. And ultimately bought his $200,000 RV in cash. Won the game. Yep. Retired. We were there as he got in and waved to us. He made it about 10 days before he's like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> you think he didn't think that he should try would RV across the country be any fun he didn't think of that he just assumed it was no it's not actually 10 days into it he's like I mean all I do is drive and then park this next to a river it's not that many stages away from homelessness um sure it's kind of fun to know that you did it and by first day one day two day three day four five six now what where do I really want to go I don't know I kind of want to be back in my hometown. Hmm. Yeah, after 10 days, he came back home. Uh, except he didn't sell. Uh, yeah, yeah, go figure, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, he mistake number one. He didn't test out his retirement dream whatsoever. Never even rented in an RV for a week. Come on, man. If you're, devel if you're devoting your entire life to one plan... Shouldn't you at least try it out and give it a whirl? My goodness, if you want to sell everything and for that matter move to Vietnam, that's cool. But try it out first. God, come here for a month first. Come here for six. You know, try it out and see if it works for you, okay? I get a lot of questions from folks who are like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, retire, go to a nice beach resort city, buy a condo there in, in Vietnam and blah, 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 and call it a day. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Even though I'm the number one Vietnam advocate on earth, I would say, shit pun, bro. Come out here and rent a place for a while. Try it. See if you like it. Try 10 different cities. You know, try 10 different properties for that matter. And, um... So try it first. Try it first is a major, major tip. Next, um, I can say, hmm, he sold his house, which is cool, uh, in order to buy the RV, which is cool, but he had nowhere to come home to. Whoops. Um, so he burnt bridges behind him, which I'm going to get to uh, prepping to leave and stuff like that. Sometimes it's a good idea, sometimes it isn't. Especially, again, haven't tested it out. Next problem, uh, in, when he's living in a big five-bedroom house, uh, his wife has her space, he has his space, you know, they have their life, their routine, their backyard, no, 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 the garage to hang out in. This is the most time this husband and wife have ever spent next to each other ever in the history of their 60-year marriage. Turns out it's not as much fun as they thought, you know, when you're in uncomfortable quarters together. So... Uh, given that, uh, fact, yikes, uh, an RV, for example, is less of a cool plan. I mean, it sounds good in the pamphlet. You talk with all your other friends and say, I'm about to go travel America in an RV. Sounds cool. Talk to the RV guy. Sounds cool. And he's going to convince you it's a good idea. For some it is. Not for everybody. Okay? So we got to keep all this firmly in mind. Um, the final thing from my uh, neighbor, Rod. After that 10 days, he came back and they got a one-room apartment together uh, for some stability, I guess. And um, she got brain cancer. 
so. They ended up having to sell the RV uh, and use all the money. You say, Mike? Uh, for medical bills and stuff like that. And uh, within a couple months, she was dead. So, uh, looking at things that way, I was going to mention this guy built up his entire life for this one thing and did nothing fun his entire life. Then uh, did it all for his future. Wife dead. So, man, if he just would have relaxed from the start, just would have gone off RVing one month out of the year, you know, from the very beginning, he would have been perfectly fine. He would have had a great time or he would have discovered new possible dreams that don't include an RV or something like that. There's all kinds of things that one can learn from this experience. So uh, why would retiring here be a bad idea? These are a handful of reasons and a handful of things to keep in mind before, you, before we go too far on this whole plan. <laughs> Okay, and um, <clears throat> another downside uh, that a lot of folks don't realize. If you come here to Vietnam, you're going to find, in most cases, that uh, you have so much money, you're effectively infinitely rich. I mean, it sounds weird to say it that way, but it's kind of like if you sit and drank 1,000 beers at the bar, you're not... Uh, situationally or wealth-wise poorer than uh, really. Uh, it's not going to really affect your long-term future, so that's what I mean by effectively free. You're not going to go poor by eating and drinking. Um, in fact, for that matter, you're probably not going to go poor by having a normal life, traveling around the country, and that kind of thing. That's cool. That's actually a huge bonus, and that's a wonderful thing about you know being here. But it's also a downside, which sounds weird. Because most people have never had that kind of infinite freedom before. So, to say this a different way, some people actually do become alcoholics. When, um, when cigarettes are 25 cents a pack, food is 10, 25 cents a meal, beers are even less than 25... Mm. A lot of people smoke themselves, drink themselves, and eat themselves to death. Yep, starving dog at a buffet. Yep. So the low price is a good thing, but also potentially a bad thing because these normal limits that you'd normally have are removed. Now that gets amplified by the fact that a lot of people come here and they don't work full time. So that means they got all day to sit there at a bar, which is cool and fun and I do it, but it's possible to go too far. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And um, more to the point, it's possible to get bored of all this real fast, you know? It's possible to get bored of eating and drinking or, you know, otherwise, uh, these dreams and fantasies you have in your mind, you know, it's easy to get, you know, bored with them and it's easy for them to burn you. Oh, I want to go live on a beach and live up my days on a hammock sipping on cocktails or I want to go to a, a, a lake and go fishing every day. Hey, that's cool. All of these are great ideas, but how long can you do it before it sucks? Okay, and don't say forever. That's not, no, mm -mm. probably not even a year. Mm -mm. So a lot of folks plan on retirement is like, I crossed the finish line. Oh, I'm in Vietnam, my tropical country with infinite money now. All right, no worries ever again. Everything's going to be perfect for the rest of my days. Not true, not true. Moving here to Vietnam is, it's just the next step. It's not your final step. Well, unless you die. Um, but uh, yeah, so thinking about it that way, one can approach moving here to it and retiring to a foreign country with more of an open mind and more of a uh, sense of purpose and less of a, well, this looked good on paper. I read this pamphlet and look at these two old people wearing these white clothes looking at a beach. I want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, bear in mind, those people on the, on the poster there, they're technically getting paid in order to do this little photo op thing. So they're not actually full advertising this idea. It's not actually retired walking on the beach, just so you know, um, and whatever. Okay. So that's a big one. That's a big one. Now, um, the, uh, do, 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 do. 
Um, next, look, we can all agree that, uh, and I'm going to keep hitting on this over and over and over. So I'm going to keep repeating this whole kind of topic from different angles. Okay. I, let's all agree that working 80 hours a week and uh, forcibly because you have no other option is a shit plan. Uh, if you're living in a country that's otherwise tremendously expensive, let's just say, then um, it can be a real, a real downer, a real bummer. Um, no. On contrast, working zero hours a week is even worse. Sounds weird that I'm saying this. It's even worse if you're working zero hours a week. Most humans, their mind goes crazy. Okay? So obviously, we've got to pick something in between zero hours a week and, you know, 80 hours a week, right? Don't say zero. Don't say 80. Ideally, what a person is able to do, ideally, is if they can have a respectable job in their home country, let's just say, and semi-retire, you know, something along those lines, uh, that would be really, really helpful. That'd be really, really helpful. And let's see, I'm just pulling this up. Can I take here we go. Um, Now, for example, my dad is working construction, and he's been doing it for several years, which is terrific. But he doesn't want to fully retire because he knows he's going to die if he fully retires and moves to a tropical country. Now, um, in contrast, uh, he's able to be flexible with hours. And, hey, I'm going to take a month off, three weeks off. In fact, uh, they're visiting here now. Um, uh, uh, anyway, um, the important idea is that... Uh, Mm. If you can find a job that's otherwise um, kind of in the middle ground, gives you freedom, gives you good money if you want it, gives you good freedom, gives you flexibility, things like that, that would be tremendous. That's, again, as ideal as it gets. Okay. So, thinking about it from, let's say, my perspective in Vietnam, I describe myself as semi-retired. Okay? What that means is I'm never going to be 100% retired. Uh, that means I'm never going to sit around and do nothing. I know I'll probably kill myself, not suicidally, but I'm just going to drink myself into oblivion or, you know, all these other negative things. So I'm never going to sit around and do nothing. Cool. Also, a lot of people get kind of, um, it makes them uncomfortable when, uh, I'm, let's say 33 years old and I look at them and say, no, nah, I'm retired. They're like, you can't be. You're not a gray hair. Oh, does that mean you're going to sit around and do absolutely nothing for the next 60 years? And that's just absolutely not true. And um, so they're a little bit weirded out about this whole concept and idea. Uh, but again, to be clear, as I define it in my own case, I'm not doing nothing, not working super hard. I have no contracts. I have no obligations and no hard obligations. I don't have a job in America. I'm not, uh, my former job that I had for many years, I'm not working any longer. Um, in fact, uh, the only jobs that I do now are those that I really enjoy and really want to, um, which is great. If I have a student that I don't like teaching, I let them know that, I'm done. Um, oh yeah, Henry, uh, what's my former job? Actually, I was a uh, national sales manager. Yeah, I uh, sold aerial photos uh, around the world, and uh, or not around the world, all over America. Oh, it was awesome. Awesome. I did that for like 11, 12 years. I can dig it. And uh, mm, I was super good at it. Uh, yeah, training folks, let's just say. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, training folks, traveling. Yeah, the 80 hours a week. Loved it. Yeah, loved it. If I could, uh, if there was a physical way of me working 120 hours a week or more, I would do it. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of months I would work 29 out of 30 days because I loved it out of choice. I loved it. So, yes, that was a really difficult thing for me to let go of as I was uh, here in um, making, deciding to make the move, retiring, so to speak. Yes, I did retire from working this particular job in, because it geographically obligates me to be in America. Um, instead, uh, pursuing basically whatever I want to, you know, here in Vietnam. So yes, I did retire, but that doesn't mean I'm idle. Okay. So 
ideally one can find, if they are going to make this move to uh, Vietnam here or otherwise, ideally you can find gainful employment in some fashion or another. Um, and there, the, the variety is really, really, really wide on the different things that you're able to do out here. Okay? Um, and some of it could be gainfully monetarily or volunteer opportunities or buying and selling motorbikes or doing tours for folks or finding some sort of niche that you enjoy. Okay? Now, <laughs> while we're here, I want to hit, uh, I want to focus on this right here. Um, uh, to, okay, this idea right here. Ideas on how to stay busy and, uh, and have fun here, okay? A lot of people believe either sit on the beach and do the hammock and do nothing thing, won't work, uh, or... Uh, I'm going to get my teaching certification, then I'm going to go to a, a school and then sign a one-year one year contract with them, and then blah, blah, blah. now you got a boss, obligations, hours, etc. You're back where you started. That's not an answer. Now, uh, some people also think like, oh, I'm going to volunteer at an orphanage or something like that. That's cool. But again, you'll probably be sick of it pretty soon, you know? Volunteering opportunities, there are an incredible number of them, however, and it's for you to decide which ones sound interesting. For example, uh, there are some people that willing workers on organic farms. Uh, do, 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 mm, mm, mm. It's something like this. And basically, and they call it woofing or they make it into a verb. Basically, this means that there's a bunch of farms all throughout the world, in fact, and you can go and stay there and work with them. And maybe they have grapes or you know, uh, stomp on grapes with big-breasted Italian women. Sweet. Or, you know, rice or whatever, uh, gardens. And you can learn about gardening. Great, if that's your thing. Uh, um, ah, and Henry, good question. Where can you find volunteer opportunities? Like, like which websites? Well, this is one of them, woofing. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I don't know, type it in. Type it into Google and see what you find. Um, and that's exactly what I'm trying to lay out. Uh, okay, I'm just typing it in Google right now. Yep, there it is. Woof.net, worldwide opportunities on organic farms. Oh, I thought it was willing workers. They must have changed their brand. Um, organic farmers and growers to produce. Anyway, this is just one idea out of many. Now, when you're actually physically here, oh, the the, the here's some other ideas. Um, being able to, it depends on what you're into. I mean, if you have a certain skill set, for example, if you really enjoy engineering, all right then. Well, there's a lot of engineering clubs. There's engineering schools, engineering universities. Um, and let's just say you enjoy fun projects like building a better mousetrap car or um, building a tower, or, you know, various games, you know, with folks, or something along those lines. Yeah, we'll just show up at the college and start working with them. What I mean by that is um, uh, show up and make some friends, you know, and then just ask, hey, do you got any side projects going on? Oh, you do. Oh, you have a, uh, you want to get started on a robotics lab where the students are able to build robots and they need someone that uh, wants to help with that kind of thing. I'm your guy. Yeah. That would be fun. Super fun. But not for everybody. For my wife, that would suck. Uh, for me, that would be super fun. Um, um, yeah, maybe if you're into... Um, um, yeah, I mean, just making friends and drinking. You'll probably find that. But if you're into history and so forth, perhaps you have military experience, for example... Okay, and maybe you're your history nut about perhaps Vietnam or Asia for that matter. You'll have no trouble, no trouble uh, finding folks that want to know about that and want to travel with you, uh, that want to go with you either by motorbike or otherwise uh, around the country to just see what it's all about out here. Oh, yeah. Um, you'll find a lot of those. So... I have never found one website that just has a whole list of opportunities because in my own experience, um, I have just stumbled into them, 
<laughs> you know, once you get here kind of thing. Uh, I suppose you could try to Google it, though, you know, and uh, see what's going on there. You could also check out the online forums, which is to say, like, um, like expat forums and stuff like that that they've got out here in Vietnam, of which there's about 50 of them, 50 forums and, or 50 uh, Facebook groups, to be really accurate. Um, Saigon expat group or whatever. And yeah, you actually, if you were to nose around there for an hour, well, you definitely find something. Um, I, so this is a fun one for me personally. I enjoy making websites and helping out bars and restaurants. And I enjoy teaching about, uh, you know, culture, helping folks with menus, making cocktails and drinking them. Uh, you know, uh, helping folks build a, or get a trip advisor page up and running. Uh, making websites, getting business cards all sorted out, um, stuff like that. I love that. That's For me, that's a joy. So I can help a restaurant become better. Yeah, and typically along the way, I get free food and drinks and, you know, get paid something or whatever. So for me, that's perfect. I would never find that online, though. Never. And they don't, it doesn't exist. Or another way of saying it is um, there's no website that iterates that as one of the possibilities. So that's a big one. Um, yeah, uh, even if you're not an English teacher of any kind, again, we're talking, uh, purely volunteer work, even if you're not an English teacher of any kind, but just simply a speaker, you're in, you're in, which uh, another way of saying that is, uh, you can find an incredible number of opportunities very, very quickly and very, very easily. Um, anything from, you know, motorbike related stuff to, uh, um, people that just want to hang out with you. Uh, yeah, bar and restaurant owners, uh, students that are about to, maybe, maybe you're from Australia, and you want, to, you want to meet all of the students that are about to study abroad in Australia who are just dying, dying to hang out with an Australian to learn everything they can about Australia. Yeah, they'll basically just buy you dinner, buy you coffee, buy you beer, buy you whatever you want. And you would have an infinitely long list of friends uh, that are willing to treat you at any given time. Come over to your house any hour or whatever the case is, whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's an example. Now, that would come from if you were to Google like, oh, study abroad programs in my local area. Oh, brr. oh uh, you know, uh, America, England, Canada, Australia. Oh. Hey, let's meet the guy who's the Canada guy. Oh, broom. hey, I'm just a, a Canadian guy that knows all about Canada. Do you have any students that want to hang out and want to learn more about Canada? <laughs> yep, that'll take you about a day, and you'll have a your plate will be full. Most importantly, you won't get bored. You won't get bored if you focus on people. Okay, this is the big takeaway here. Big takeaway, okay? And I'm going to write it for clarity's sake, for em emphasis' sake. Um, mm, yep, you won't get bored if you focus on people, okay? Meeting people, having fun with people, going around with people, um, spending time with people, helping people, having dinner with people, um, learning from people, and things like that. You won't get bored, okay? The people that get really bored the fastest and die the fastest, die inside, die in their mind, die in their soul, or physically die, are those that forget about the people part. I'm just going to sit on a beach in a hammock, sipping on a cocktail, looking at the waves coming in. Where's the people, bro? Uh, oh, I'm just going to go fishing in my back pond every day. The people. Where's the people? Um... You know, I'm going to sit at home and watch TV and Netflix all day like I've always been dreaming about finally having time to do. Where's the people? But again, if you focus on making friends and uh, surrounding yourself with wonderful, jubilant, you know, excited people that would love to learn about you and your life, yeah, that list is infinitely long and you will never be bored for the rest of your life. And you will, your schedule will fill up super fast, super fast if you have that attitude. Okay, so... There's a lot of different ideas, and it's ultimately, once again, for you to decide for yourself um, which aspect or angle is the most interesting to you. Uh, so, anyway, um, moving forward a little bit. Um, okay. Goals, what to do out here. Now, uh, let's kind of move on to the next one here. 
uh, which is uh, cost of living. Cost of living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfectly right, Henry. It's natural to be to want to be around others. Yes, absolutely. Um. Okay. Uh, this has got to be said too. And thank you for pointing this out and getting me on this track. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm. I want to tell you this because I have actually met thousands. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. Thousands of people that have either retired, traveled the world, or um, are currently semi-retired, or are older and are fully retired, and, and different countries throughout the... I have a bunch of experience at this, okay? And I'm telling you right now that uh, we got two ends of the gamut here, okay? Uh, the language, okay? You're either in the bubble or you're integrated into the society, okay? And then there's, it's a gamut, so you could be anywhere in between. That's fine. Now, what this side of the equation actually looks and feels like is, uh, and, and I'll just use Vietnam as an example, but equal application in Honduras, Mexico, India, whatever. Yep, I only speak English, learn zero Vietnamese. I only eat, uh, let's say, American food or Western food and zero Vietnamese food. Okay, I don't bother reading any of the signs. I just expect folks to kind of cater to what I'm up to. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and um, all of my friends are expats. After 10 years of living here, I know zero Vietnamese. Or zero Spanish, for that matter. Can't even count 10. Ah, oh, you don't really need to. I got my guys here. Blah, 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 blah. Now, most people, in my experience, average people... Uh, oh, thank you, Rob. Uh, visas and permanent residency. Yeah, I'll make a note of that, and I'll hit that next. Perfect, thank you. Um, but I did want to say, don't fall into this trap. I've seen a lot of people, yes, in Thailand. Yep, it's about 15 dudes that all live together in one building that all go to the same bar all day long, every day. Sure, they might have been there 15, 20 years, but uh, they're ultimately trapped into this tiny li little lily pad. You know, and they can't go outside of it. They don't go to Vietnamese bars, Vietnamese places, have zero Vietnamese friends. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, oh, yep. Peace out there, Henry. I know it's getting late for you, buddy. Cheers, huh? But um, anyway, don't fall into this trap. The other end of the gamut, of course, is to learn as much as you can about the language. Meet as many local people as you can. Even if you speak to them in English so in the beginning, so be it. Just meet as many of the local people as you can and kind of be able to go from there then your life is going to become awesome, okay? If you get stuck in the bubble, stuck in the lily pad, this timeline of how enjoyable this is for how long becomes much shorter. And your ultimate enjoyment that you have of the, the whole place and experience becomes much smaller uh, because you're limited to uh, less than 1% of folks that are out here. And you're effectively deaf, mute, and illiterate. I want to be very clear. You're deaf, mute, and illiterate. And you have the ability of a child. Uh, in other words, you need someone to babysit you, take care of you, translate on your behalf, and otherwise hold your hand throughout the entire experience. That sucks. Uh, now, this is the other end of the gamut and steps in between. So, yes, one thing I do is help bring folks from this end of the gamut to this end of the gamut if they're willing. Your experience will be infinitely better over here. Cool. Cool. So, yeah, uh, uh, since you asked there, Rob, uh, let's get into the, the visas, okay, and permanent residency and things like that. Um, here's the skinny of it, my friend. Uh, it's very reasonable to, uh, for most people from most countries, most of the time, to get one-year uh, multiple-entry visa and um, <clears throat> just keep renewing that once a year. Really, the Vietnamese government has no limit on how many visas you can get. Your only real limit is how many fit in your passport. But uh, most passports have enough pages such that if you put slap 10 of them in there or 20 of them in there, you're still good to go and you have to renew every 10 years anyway. So actually, the short, simple answer, that's the way to do it. You know, just get your typical run-of-the-mill tourist visa over and over. Yeah, and I have met an incredible number of folks who have done that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've even met um, like expats in Thailand uh, who effectively 
Uh, yeah, they just leave the country every three months or whatever length of time, six months or something. Oh, yeah, which costs next to nothing. Go to Myanmar. Okay, blank, blank, 100 bucks, I'm there, done. Um, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, it sounds weird to just live here and effectively visa, or, you know, tourist visa only, but it's really not that weird. In fact, um, to become a Vietnamese citizen and otherwise get like a Vietnamese visa or passport or something along those lines is tremendously hard and unnecessary. You could put it that way. No. Uh, permanent residency, uh, to be really clear, uh, the only thing that's close to that would be a temporary residence card. Um, and to be honest with you, I've never gotten one because I've never needed it. Uh, but typically, uh, that has had, if you are gainfully employed, especially have a long-term contract with, in one fashion or another with one organization or another. As you'd expect, way over 90% of the time, that includes working at a school of some sort. Uh, which is cool. And, um, mm, I do a visa run once a year. Ah, can you purchase a one year visa right away? And does that mean you only have to do a visa run once a year? Ah, excellent question, Nicholas. Well, um, in general, yes, you can purchase a visa right away. Um, in fact, I'll do my best to scare up a website for it. Well, if you go to Google and type in visa ac application, um, uh, application, Vietnam visa application, smile family there, there it is. Um, yep, and it'll show you all of the, uh, options for you. Oh, here we go. Sweet, found it the first try. Okay, well this lists out a few options, and I believe in this case you're able to, uh, choose your originating country and stuff like that. But again, uh, um, yeah, multiple entry one year uh, stamping fee, U.S. American passport holders only, $135 a year for a one year multiple entry visa. Oh, that's a bit multiple entry business visa. Sweet. Okay, but let's see. Tourist visa, one year multiple entry, 135 Booyah. Now, um, I did want to be clear that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and you can do this indefinitely. Just keep your, yeah, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. I've run across folks that have been doing this for 20 years. No problem. No problem. You don't got to marry a Vietnamese person to get the marriage visa thing. Nah. And you really don't have to establish a business. Nah. You don't have to, like, again, sign a contract with a school. Nah. Just do this. It's fine. It's easy. Um, and then doing border runs every six months. Again, people exaggerate how difficult this is. It's not. It's like definitely under 50 bucks round trip and takes me from Hue City anyway. Seven hours tops. And people freak out about how hard this is. And I'm like, all right, get on a bus, go to Laos, have a couple beers, buy a couple of gifts, you know, load that up and come on back, whatever. I'm back in time at three o'clock in the afternoon and time for dinner and cocktails. So yeah, it's easy, man. So you can work in Vietnam on a tourist visa. Does that mean your income has to be generated overseas? Excellent question, Rob. Excellent question. Well, um, I, I'm glad you put the air quotes over the word work, okay? Because, look, there's so many forms of work. There's so many different forms of it. Now, on one end of the gamut is signing a long-term work contract with one particular business, which is exactly what it sounds like. You will be working here for this day, January 1st until... December 31st, and do, sign on this dotted line, you will be paid this much money, you're expected to be here this many hours, blah, 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 blah. This has got to be certified, notarized, then you got to, uh, oh man, these steps are, I've never done these steps because they're just nightmarishly hard, but, we're not hard, but unnecessary and I don't want to, but you got to get a medical certification, like let's say your uh, um, next step would be... Uh, your college diploma has got to be like certified that it's real. So that's got to be turned into one office and they got to be able to notarize this. They're going to go ahead and double check this. And then you're going to, and then you're going to ultimately get this uh, business visa. It allows you to work for one to five years or more, which is not free. So most of these companies will help you pay for it. But what that means is they subtract it from your wage uh, and stuff like that. And then if you quit the contract early, then they're not only going to not pay you any of your back pay, but then expect you to 
pay them back for this whole work visa, blah, 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 you know, kind of stuff. Plus, when you have one work visa with one company, with one contract, you're not allowed to like, as far as I know, anyway, you're not allowed to work for like three, four different schools with three or four different contracts all on one work visa. In other words, you're pigeonholed into one company, one place for one year. That sucks. Okay. So that's this end of the gamut. I don't do that whatsoever. Now, the other end of the gamut is to work independently, which is to say, uh, because it's a cash-based society out here, um, I could actually work indefinitely. If there was 10 of me, we could all 10 be here and I could just work for cash and do side gigs indefinitely, easily, easily. In which case I'm not bound to any one school whatsoever. And because it's a cash gig, well, I don't need a work visa. Uh, and no, I don't have to pay any taxes of any kind. Sweet. Um, and these can range from buying and selling motorbikes. You know, you get a bunch of desperate sellers that want to get rid of it for a hundred bucks. Great. You get a few desperate buyers that will gladly pass you three, four hundred bucks, you know, for a bike, especially if you take credit card. Um, yeah, I mean, so I do that all the time. Um, you're, uh, yeah, folks that want to, uh, there's a programming outfit that uh, does outsourced programming work. Uh, in other words, American companies that want websites and otherwise software made, they'll outsource it to Vietnam. Terrific. Well, this group of Vietnamese folks want an English speaker there to consult with them like a couple times a week just to help them correspond with email a little slicker, learn some slang in English. Uh, I'm a programming guy, so kind of help out with the programming uh, details and stuff like that. All cash. Here you go. You know, here's a few hundred bucks a month just for that to swing in once a week. Okay, that doesn't require a work visa at all. So I would much rather do this end of the gamut of the small side gigs and things like that. So uh, the, the problem that people run into is if they try to do like, I work at this one school every single day in like a contract-like sort of situation, but I don't actually have a contract nor a work visa, then they get busted. Sure, because they're trying to do live their life this way without the right paperwork and without jumping through the right hoops. So rightfully so, they get busted trying to do that. Then they're going to fill forums and fill ideas with, it is impossible to work whatsoever in this country unless you have a work visa. Again, if you're doing this style of work. So, but if you do this style of work, independent gigs and go independently and things like that, you're fine. You're singing. Okay, so... So anyway, um, does it mean I can work in Vietnam on a tourist visa if you're doing this style? Yes, it does. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, now, can you generate income from overseas? Yep, I do that uh, with... There uh, mm, uh, we go. Antiray.com, I uh, do teaching online, for example. Now, Antiray.com is... It's all Vietnamese students that want to learn English, but it's based in Singapore. Sweet. So what that actually means is uh, they pay via PayPal. Sweet. And that also means that they don't issue W-2s to the United States. Cool. So technically, I don't actually have to report it. Um, I mean, whatever. Uh, but uh, similarly, Vietnam has no knowledge uh, of this money that's being generated overseas. I could probably pull off the same thing by working with an American company, Mexican company, Indian company, etc. And yeah, that's quite ideal, actually. And there's a huge number of people that are doing this. So digital nomads in particular. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, you probably heard the term. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, given that, um, yeah, I, I do a mix of it all. You know, I've got a bunch of in income generated from overseas. I do a lot of cash gigs. Um, again, the one thing I never do is sign a contract and work long term with one given school or place or whatever the case is. So that's sweet. Um, anyway, um, yep, long term tourist visa. There you go. There you go. All pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. And to get a tourist visa, there's no requirements. There's no college diploma required. There's no income verification requirements. There's no medical exam or mental exam that you got to see. And, um, uh, anything like that. And uh, so, yeah, it's open and shut. You do have to get a visa approval letter ahead of time, hence this website. But yeah, you can re research about that, you know, if you want to. Now, I did want to also mention, uh, with regards to business visas, there's a lot of folks that uh, want to... Um, 
Ah, ah, thank you. Um, yeah, I, yep, 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 yep. Uh, thank you. Yeah, the, there is a uh, foreign income uh, exclusion. And uh, correct me where I'm wrong, but it's a, about a hundred grand. It might be about 105, 110 these days. I don't know, but it's about 100 grand. Another way of saying this is that your income exclusion, uh, say it real simple. Your first 100 grand that you earn overseas is tax free. Okay, that's an oversimplification. Oversimplification. But generally, oh, 105. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I was guessing. I, it's irrelevant to me because I'm never going to get close to that ever anyway, reasonably speaking. So, yeah. Now, this does not include, like, as far as I know, uh, Medicare and Medicaid and other little minor things with regards to the United States. It's just all kind of overall income. So to say it a different way, if I were to earn $80,000 a year with this um, uh, income exclusion because I'm living overseas, I could write off, so to speak, uh, 105 grand. Plus, uh, they also have a per diem kind of thing, too, which is like, you know, 50 bucks a day. Whatever, I could write that all down, but the, or make my tax liability lower. But that wouldn't mean that I pay zero in the United States necessarily. So um, the reason for the United States trying to tax folks when, that are moving overseas is they're trying to get the gajillionaires, right? The folks that are pulling in five million a year or something along those lines. Yeah, or purposely trying to just move down to Mexico right across the border so that they can earn billions down there in Mexico and avoid taxes in both cases. Okay. Uh, I'm not one of those fish. I'm more of a minnow. I don't need all that. You know, if I got 20 grand a year, I'm laughing. You know, so I'm never going to approach this number personally. But uh, this is relevant for a lot of folks that are, let's say, of American residency and want to move abroad indefinitely. Uh, they would be technically subject to tax for the rest of their life. And no, you're not able to, uh, what is it, forego your American citizenship or dissolve, abandon, that kind of thing. No, uh, on the note of taxes, correct me where I'm wrong, if any of you all know, but as far as I know, technically, uh, you could leave America and earn millions of dollars and otherwise owe millions of dollars to the United States and remain outside of the United States indefinitely and they would not send the IRS tax police out to get you. Okay, so if you owe five million in taxes, and as far as I know, they're not going to arrest you in Thailand or Singapore or something like that. They're not going to send Dog the Bounty Hunter on you. However, uh, once your foot touches American soil, yeah, they'll probably arrest you immediately at the airport for tax evasion. Yeah. In other words, uh, if you do want to act illegally and otherwise not pay your taxes, uh, especially if you're talking about a large sum of money like this, they will get you once you come home. So, yeah, bear that in mind as well. So, obviously, I recommend following the law as best you can. You know, um, or, you know, if you got millions of dollars, I don't know. Um, if you got millions of dollars, you got a high quality problem on your hands anyway. Just pay your taxes and be done with it. I don't know. It, the, the point of retiring is to not worry about stuff. Jeepers, Carmenelli. <laughs> okay, so, um, mm, taxes and visas. Anyway, I, I, I was going to go there, so thank you. And by the way, Ability to stay overseas, certain countries without paying taxes, extradition, you need to renounce citizenship. Yeah, and as far as I understand, renouncing citizenship is tremendously difficult. Um, I haven't looked into it that closely because uh, that would be irrelevant for me. Um, I've been blessed. Okay, Nicholas, I've been blessed to retire in 2001. Terrific. I've been entertaining the idea of being an expat and really admire your philosophy and approach to expat life. Should write an ebook. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Nicholas. Perhaps uh, that will be compiled here. I'm, I'm enjoying the, the video aspect for the time being, but that might be in the future. I'd be delighted to kind of FAQ it out for folks. Heck, even a 20-page ebook might be useful for folks. Like, here's the main points that most people ask most of the time. <laughs> yep, and thank you, too, for your support there, John. So, anyway, um, terrific. And, uh, by the way, the 
You may all be aware that on uh, this page right here, what, what I mean by that is, oh, here we go. On this uh, Reddit, whoa, on this Reddit post that I've got going on, um, I have a list of potential other topics. So you guys are welcome to ask anything, anytime, in any order, and I would be glad to do my best. Uh, but I am going to try to cover all of them best I can here. Okay, cool. Um, and, uh, yep, there we go. So you can check that out if you'd like. Now, um, okay, uh, taxes and pensions. Booyah. So I did want to mention as well, and, I, I, and John, I believe you have an insight on this. There is, uh, what is that, no, AT, or no ATM fee credit card. I believe you had one of those. I just don't remember the link or the name of it off the bat. Um, but uh, it's probably got the word platinum in there somewhere. I don't know. But regardless, there are ways of just keeping all of your money in the United States. And then either A, sending it over in chunks, like a couple thousand at a time via a wire in some cases. Um, in my case, I use Wester, or, uh, Wells Fargo uh, Bank. And I'm, able, I'm able to send up to $3,000 at a time for a fee of about $8. So that's cool. I don't do that every day or every month, but uh, debit card is the favorite right now. The Schwab, that's it. Thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, there are quite a few. And John, I recall you had a site that was like fatwallet.com or something like that that gives all kinds of terrific insight on, uh, yeah, traveling abroad and ideal credit cards and financial choices that you can make. Is that right? If, you, if you'd be kind enough, John, to please send um, uh, a link to that, that would be quite helpful. Um, but yeah, the bottom line is, uh, with this particular debit card, you can withdraw money from anywhere, and they give it to you at the spot rate. Uh, what I meant by that is the spot exchange rate, as far as I know, with no exchange fees. And on top of that, uh, they if you do accrue ATM fees on Vietnam side, for example, which typically is about... Mm, three bucks, just so you know. Uh, they, the Schwab's people, will actually reimburse that fee. I'm sure there's, you know, catches, details, and a contract that thick about it, but that's the skinny of it. You're effectively able to withdraw your money from any ATM in the world and for no fee. Cool. Kind of pull it out as you need it, you know, sort of stuff. That's about as ideal as it gets. So what that means is, a lot of y'all are able to either A, get income earned and then sent to your American or home. And I'm just going to keep going with American just for fun, but I realize you're not all American. But um, your home country. And then, uh, yeah, ultimately withdraw it from there. Slick. Uh, if you get pensions or you get uh, Social Security or any other form of electronic money. Yep. Uh, that's how you can do it. Pretty slick. And uh Charles Schwab there, uh, of course, you can able to do a lot of this stuff online and all that, too, including the application process and so forth. Yes, uh, most credit card companies uh, are able to mail you a credit card anywhere you're at on Earth. In my own case, to my shock and amazement, I wanted a new Wells Fargo debit card. And, uh, yeah, I picked up the phone and called uh, the Wells Fargo people, and sure enough, they next dated. it. Uh, it took three days, but, yeah. Uh, right to my house in Vietnam. I was just astonished. But yeah, and for free too. I was like, okay, sweet. You know, because I was explaining to him to mail it to America is going to be tricky. Yeah. How do you pay rent and other bills? Cash? Do you have a bank account over there? Good question. You typically need to maintain a U.S. residence somewhere. Most people use a certain family member. Ah, okay, cool. Uh, I'll start with your question there, Rob. Uh, how do you pay rent? Yep, uh, it's a cash-based society here in Vietnam. Now, there are uh, rental folks that are able to do bank transfers in general, or perhaps, there we go. Yep, I was going to get to that. I was going to get to that, John. And uh, actually, John, could you, uh, because, yep, mailing address. Uh, yeah, I'll get to that. Um, so, uh, most places, again, it's all paid in cash. There are some places that are able to take, you know, credit card, debit card, or some other bank transfer situation. I'm quite certain. Because there's a lot of places, let's say in Da Nang, that specifically cater towards expats that want to move to Da Nang and perhaps rent a condo or something like that. Which is a terrific plan. 
It's a terrific plan. I wouldn't live there personally. It's not my cup of tea, but but yeah. Basically, it's it'll be something to give you an idea. It'll be like, let's say, 500 bucks a month, all included. I mean, electricity's done. Uh, internet's done. Water's done. And you're basically living in a rather comfortable apartment slash condo. And typically speaking with a handful of other expats, the folks there speak English. They take credit card. They're really helpful. Um, I've seen a tremendous number of great videos written by good or done by very good people uh, that describe that way of life. Um, and uh, so, yeah, in that instance, I would expect they take some sort of, other, you know, credit card payment. Now, I don't live that way uh, personally. I'm more of a live in a Vietnamese neighborhood, a Vietnamese kind of way. So if you're on that end of the gamut, then yes, it's all cash, straight up. And typically it's six months at a time or optionally 12 months at a time. Um, so as a result, my, uh, yeah, like let's say it's, I'll do it in Dong, uh, 5 million Dong for my apartment rent. So yes, uh, six months times five, 30 million. Yep, 30 million Dong in cash, which is a stack of like 6,500s, you know, yep. I go with the landlord, they pour some tea, we shake hands, we talk. Obviously, there's contracts involved. Makes sense. Uh, obviously, they want a copy of our passport. Makes sense. And then pay the money. Great. Done. Uh, then we register with the local police that, hey, this is where I live now. It's my long-term visa. Blah, 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 blah. It's pretty straightforward uh, in general if you speak Vietnamese. Um, if you don't, it can be really tricky, I think but uh, doable. So anyway, cash is typically king. Now, when it comes to internet, internet is, let's say, 400,000-ish uh, a month because I want 45 megabit, super fast internet, bang. Um, the best package they got. Uh, but yeah, same concept. I just paid 12 months up front. Uh, so do the math, whatever number that came out to be. Yeah, when the internet guys showed up, they sent their little rep over with the clipboard. Oh, which one do you want? The bottom one, the big one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it's going to cost this much. <laughs> okay, sir, I guess you're all set. Yeah, done. Um, and if there's a problem with it, pick up the phone and call them. They'll come by and fix it. It's easy. Never had an issue. Never. When I change residency, same thing. Pick up the phone, give them a call. Boom, boom. Oh, you're moving over here? Okay, great. Boom, boom, done. Um, other bills, including like power bills and water bills, well, that's that's variable a little bit. But you are able to pay a bunch of cash up front to them. For example, you could show up and give them five mil, and uh, five million that is, which pff, that ought to cover you for a year. Uh, that will, let's just say, um, yeah. And then they just deduct it from your account. So there are people that actually walk in and check the meter, check the water meter, and then in this case they'll like punch it in their little machine and then it'll print off a receipt that'll say like, you use this many kilowatt hours, you use this many meters of water and your cost is this much, but your account remaining balance is this much. And then they like tape it to your gate. Or I mean, they'll ring your doorbell if you're home, they'll hand it to you. Um, and also if you're home and you don't have a credit ahead of time, they'll be like, oh, your bill is 180,000. Okay, here's 180,000, okay. All right, have a good day. That's it. So it's pretty cool. And yeah, they do have offices you pay in, in, in person. I Maybe it's possible to set something up with a credit card auto billing or whatever, but that's just not a thing out here. And again, I'm more on this gamut, end of the gamut than this side. Now, I did want to say a tremendous uh, great point in the middle, or a little more on this side, is doing a uh, homestay option. This is a really terrific plan, by the way. Really terrific plan. To give you an example of what a homestay option looks like, um, and actually I'll try to find an actual link to an actual place so you can look at actual pictures. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Mm. This will just take me a moment. I'll do my best to kind of multitask here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, shoot. They are all over. Great. But uh, here's the skinny of it. Um, yep. Do, 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 do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. That F75 um, place as an example. So you go in and yes, it is a homestay. So that means they have a little mix. So they have like, let's say four or so really big rooms, which are going to match similar to a hotel room, more or less. 
Uh, it'll have a bed or two and probably a big ass balcony. Um, have everything you need. I mean, a TV, AC, large screen, mirrors, bathroom. I mean, basically it's a room. Uh, and imagine if you think about it like a long-term hotel room, you're pretty close. Desk, etc. But along with that, it's going to already have a kitchen fully stocked, fully furnished, fully ready to rock. Um, and yeah, you're going to be sharing not your room, but rather the entire house with obviously a family at some level or another. And um, it's going to have hangout areas. It's got a coffee shop right out in the front. It's got even a full bar if you want to sit there and drink Jameson all night, whatever. They got it all. In other words, it's turnkey. You show up with nothing except for some cash in your in your passport, and you're in today. And you can stay there for two weeks, a month, two months, six months, two years, doesn't matter. And you can pay monthly or annually, however you want, no problem. In that case, it's about six million a month. So what are you talking? Uh, roughly 250 bucks, you know? Ah, excellent question, Rob. Yep, absolutely you can. That's what I do in Hawaii City, actually. I'm a fixer, as you put it. Yes. Uh, can you hire a fixer to help you navigate and get settled? Yes. Uh, and in fact, I highly, highly, highly recommend that. Highly. Uh, because when I'm, uh, for example, I've helped out, uh, I don't want to say hundreds, but certainly, certainly more than 20 uh, people get settled exactly like you said, because I can save them a boatload of money. A boatload. And uh, in between cost of living, where to buy food and drinks, um, stuff like that. So, yes, I handle that personally because I understand the needs of a um, expat English speaker or person from this you know, background and culture. Oh, hey, Nicholas. Yeah, please do, buddy. If you want to come out to Way City, yeah, I will save you money. If you give me 500 bucks worth of fixer money i'll save you five grand over the course of a year guaranteed man guaranteed so that's what i that's why i enjoy doing it um yeah i uh really really fast examples like i mean the basics of like getting the visa arranged and getting a house arranged are your obvious main ones right uh figuring out where the hospital is let's just say i mean it's worth knowing uh getting a phone card all sorted out better have that Oh, and you better have the phone number for the beer delivery guy or the water delivery guy. Or uh, if you got a stove, what about the um, um, uh, getting the... And we're back. All right. Hey, yeah, Nicholas. Hey, you know, this is... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Here's just a one, just a quick, 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 quick example. Um... I got buddies of mine that actually live in a Vietnamese neighborhood, which is terrific, uh, but they live in the bubble. That means speak zero Vietnamese and didn't integrate whatsoever. They don't talk to any neighbors, no zero Vietnamese friends, dot, 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 dot. Uh, but uh, they, they hired me uh, to swing out there for like 50 bucks, you know, for the day. And I'm like, guys, I am going to save you hundreds. Yeah, I mean, little things like they didn't have a doorbell. That sucks. They didn't even know where to buy one. I do. Uh, they had a bunch of garbage uh, sitting out, uh, because it's a rental, a bunch of garbage on their rooftop and a garbage sitting out in front of their place and motorcycle parts. Fixed two phone calls. I had uh, guys come over, cleaned up the whole works for free. Um, yeah, they would drive uh, five or ten kilometers across town to go to Big C in order to try to buy beer in little plastic bags and then bring that home on their motorcycle along with jugs of water and backpacks. And I'm like, guys, 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 guys. You so like top place. So yeah, we uh, I went over there and just talked to her, and she's a super nice woman, as you'd expect, and got her phone number, and then Bia, Nook, Jai, uh, Bet, and so I'm like, bro, now, and then I entered in her phone number the address where he lives and his and stuff like that. So now he just picks up the phone and sends a text. Oh, I sent a Bia text, resend. Bling, bling. Ten minutes later, ding dong. Ah, all right, perfect. That's way easier than driving way the hell across town. And for that matter, he's paying double by going to the the big C. So by doing that alone, especially when you're talking three cases a week. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I paid for myself ten times over with that one visit. So yes, that's a very real thing. Um, and a very good example. Um, 
again, often in a homestay environment, they're going to be able to help you in that same regard, uh, which is great. Um, so I know personally uh, about six uh, homestays just in Hue City. I haven't personally met any in any other city just because I'm not physically there. But with that said, I can tell you the ones that are good and bad, depending on your needs. And for that matter, Vietnamese ability, um, among other things. So um, anyway, yep, that's a, that's a great way to go. And that's a nice balance. So in short, you could figure um, for $6 million in Hue City anyway, uh, do the math on conversion rates or whatever. It's probably $250 American dollars-ish. Uh, maybe 200 uh, euros, something like that. Um, yeah, you're, you're sorted, basically. Um, no, uh, great. <laughs> Cost of living. Overall, it's pretty low. I do have a video about this, of course, which I trust a lot of you have seen already. Um, that, uh, yeah, really underscores this. Um, and I will just slap it up here super quick again, just for fun. Um, there we go. There we go. Um, but yes, we make it for under $800 a, a month for my wife and I both combined. That's not an accident. Uh, we choose to have a simpler life than most folks and we don't need much. Um, I don't eat at Western places really. I don't go downtown very much because soup and beer cost five times as much basically. Um, so yeah, living a Vietnamese like lifestyle, it's quite reasonable to pull that off. So yeah. Um, now if you were to double it and again, look at two grand a month, you're laughing. You're laughing. Now, is it possible to spend more than two grand a month? Yep. Sure is. Sure is. Uh, but again, in my opinion, if I were to be very blunt, uh, that'd be true if you're an idiot and you don't consult a guy like me first. You know, and you just blindly show up and take like, oh, I'll take the top choice off of TripAdvisor or the Airbnb, and I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Black. Help yourself. But um, uh, help yourself. But why? Okay. So um, cost of living, they can kind of have that in mind. Tough call. But what I can is there is always going to be cheap places to live in Vietnam, period. There always will be. <clears throat> is it true? Is it true that if you look at one particular house in Da Nang, in the heart of the expat community district, that that will climb from, you know, hundred grand a year up to five, a uh, hundred grand to buy it to five hundred grand, you know, to buy it in a course of a handful of years? Yeah, totally possible. Totally possible. If you choose to physically live there only and nowhere else. So, um. Anyway, uh, given that, um, the, uh, do, 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 do. Um, next, uh, cost of living, uh, retiring young, this and that. Now, part of the reason I'm able to semi-retire young, uh, I don't have enough money to, to make me laugh forever, obviously. You know, that wasn't part of the plan. Um, in this case... Uh, what I ended up doing is once I know that I only got to pull in a thousand bucks a month, I could damn near work for minimum wage and pull this off. So yeah, it's rather tremendous, you know, in that regard. Um, next, uh, okay. In this handling bills and money. Okay. Uh, now I did want to mention this to you guys. This is one of the secrets that I've been using for a while. Um, uh, do, do, do. UPS mailbox. This is a big one. This is a big one. Okay. Now this goes by a few different names, but I'll just type it in right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. PMB. Yep. Private mailbox. Now these come in a couple different shapes and sizes, but uh, main idea, think PO box. Okay. Now, P.O. Box is cool, it's cheap, it's doable. But the problem is, it's uh, you're not able to use that on, let's just say, your driver's license. You're not able to use that in some cases, I don't want to say about tax forms, but there's a lot of things you can't use it for. UPS can't list, for example. And when people say C is, okay? So, given that, uh, so, 
And to give you an example, in my own case, I have a box rented from the UPS store, and it is $120 a year, something like that. And, uh, yep, it's a full-on street address, 317 4th Street South, La Crosse, Wisconsin, 54601. Boom! So that's on my ID. It's on my password. It's on my tax forms library. It's on all of my bank statements, credit card related, everything. Well, I don't have credit cards, but, uh, you know, all financial documents, all kinds. In fact, when I was sitting at the immigration office getting uh, my uh, wedding visa, yeah, that's the address I gave them. They're like, all right, cool. Is it a street address? Not P.O. Box? Great. Oh, sailed right through. Yeah. Um, even when I was in college, I mean, just I, everything, everything all go. Now, this is a cheaper way of going about it. Um, again, 120 bucks a year. So an example of that would be, um, uh, I'm here in Vietnam. Yeah, for basically five bucks plus cost of shipping, they'll pile up all my mail, put it in one big deal and ship it via UPS, obviously, to wherever I want on earth. Sweet. Sure, but granting the fact it takes a while to get here, of course. Still, once every handful of months, you know, I just pay the 20 bucks or whatever and have to send it all to me. That's pretty sweet. So that's the way of handling all this that, uh, that works out really darn well. Okay? Um, now, there are other mailbox companies that are actually able to take it a step further. What that means is they will open all your mail on your behalf and then actually scan everything and then uh, send you an email with all the scans of all of your mail. Likewise, if you receive a check in the mail, they're able to deposit it on your behalf. That's pretty sweet. Now, if you're looking at going that route, um, and I'll think of the name of the company in just a moment, uh, that's, that's much more deluxe and more expensive. You're gonna be looking at about 500 bucks a year uh, to be able to pull that off. But if you've got a somewhat complicated life and expect to have a lot of mail, you know, sent to and from me. Ah, Earth Class Mail. There it is. Got it. Um, I'll send a link. Got it. Earthclassmail.com. Copy link address. Great. And then you can do your own research from there and decide if this is a good move for you or not. Um, for me, it's not. I don't need that kind of service. And that's overkill. Uh, but again, for a lot of other folks, it's just right kill. So yeah, that ought to be a nice help, I would expect. Mm -hmm. Now, um, this is really important to have this locked down. The other big reason, by the way, super quick for having a uh, private mailbox here like this is, in my own personal case, I traveled around quite a bit, and I was, um, uh, what's the word? Um, Traveling address to address, and I was actually homeless for a couple of years. However, I've had the same mailbox for about, same address for about 15 years or so. So that's pretty sweet. Longer than that, actually. Um, so I don't have to change my address ever. You know, when I move, even when I was, I could keep renewing this indefinitely. And yes, if I were to sign up with Charles Schwab, for example, uh, yep, I would give them that address. Good to go. Uh, better than renting an empty apartment. Okay, um, next, uh, okay, technology, communication, internet, and phones. All right, this is a big one, okay? And uh, I can, a minor note, small number, okay, John, a minor note, a small number of large U.S. financial institutions have a private mailbox blacklist that if that is what it's used for a residence address instead of just mailing address on forms. Sometimes you need a less visible private mailbox provider for that service. Um, yes, and uh, I don't have Charles Schwab, so I can't say uh, much about that. No, uh, but what I can say is with uh, Wells Fargo in my case, never an issue. Discover card, no issue. Citibank, no issue. The United States government, no issue. Uh, immigration related things, no issue. Uh, immigrating to Vietnam, that is, uh, no issue. Oh, and pardon me for just one moment. Anyway, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Uh, I'm just saying I never had an issue. Look into the fine print. Figure it all out. You know, do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. No. Um, and yeah, Earth Class Mail, maybe it's better, maybe it's not. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, it, 
It's a step in the right direction. I'll say it that way. It's a step in the right direction. If you're retiring and moving overseas, there's no point in renting an empty apartment just to have a residential address. That is absurd. Um, sure, ideally you have someone you deeply trust, family member, let's just say, uh, you know, uh, that is able to handle mail on your behalf. But keep in mind, you're troubling them at one dimension or another. I mean, how many times do they have to mess with your mail, send a mail, forward your mail, that kind of thing? I don't know. Decide for yourself, you know, how you want to do it. But I'm just pointing you in generally the right direction. This has worked for me indefinitely to this day for over 15 years. Perfectly zero issues ever. Just saying. So, um, okay, cool. Technology, communication, internet, and phones. Okay. Uh, shocker of shockers. Vietnam internet is better than American internet on average. Okay. I want to be real clear about that. Uh, Vietnamese cell phone providers are better than American cell phone providers on average. Uh, mm. Okay, so with mobile phone, 120 gigabytes of data a month is about $5 a month. Uh, that's pretty banging. That's pretty banging. Yes, there are a lot of folks that just don't even connect to internet at their own house because their phone is so awesome. Yeah. Now, to give you another idea, when doing a, um, a voice call, okay, and this could be over Facebook Messenger or over Google Hangouts or perhaps over Skype, uh, perhaps over FaceTime, you know, Zalo, WhatsApp, dot, 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 dot. These are all voice over IP services that work over the internet. Um, obviously, in each of these services, you're able to uh, connect with folks that have it. For example, you can call Google Hangouts people for free, Skype people for free, or WhatsApp people for free, FaceTime people for free, that kind of thing. That's pretty cool. And the amount of data that it uses is shockingly small. So to say this all a different way, I literally could sit on the phone indefinitely, and I'm not going to get into video, that's a topic of its own, but just I could vo voice call and turn it on and leave it and set the phone down indefinitely, and I would not run out of data, okay? So I want to tell you, by paying this $5 a month, all data, phone calls, and communication and correspondence is handled all at once. It's pretty sweet, okay? Now, the ability to call the United States phone numbers, in some cases, can be involve at least an extra step. Uh, for example, uh, you could go to Skype, for example, and then get a Skype number, which, as I recall, and you can Google this, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, yeah, just Google it, uh, how to get a Skype number, and they'll tell you exactly what the updated prices are and stuff like that, but I recall it being something like 60, 70 bucks, might be less, 60, 70 bucks, and you got yourself a Skype number. So in other words, you're able to pick up your phone and call America, Canada, and perhaps a few other countries for free. And when they look at the caller ID, the caller ID is going to say your Skype number. That's cool. And likewise, if they from America or Canada, let's say, were to call that Skype number, your phone here in Vietnam will ring just like normal. Oh, hello. Yeah. So it's pretty sweet. Now, what you don't want to do is have your American or Canadian cell phone company uh, use their services and then their overseas services of some kind. It's going to be absurdly expensive. To give you a super fast example, uh, my buddy uh, Derek uh, came over here and he um, ultimately, um, mm, this, he's like, Brad, I got Verizon. It's fine. Brad, I notified him that I'm coming over here. Brad, it's cool. They said I can use my phone when I'm overseas. And they only they said it was only 10 bucks. And I'm like, cool thought, Mr. Never Read the Fine Print, bro. Okay, what that means is it's $10 a day. Uh, oh, yeah, and it's like a 50 cents or a buck a text message to say nothing of actually making phone calls. He had a little sticker shock when he used his Verizon phone number, uh, went all the way back to America, and it was like 580 bucks for one month that Verizon charged them. You can do it, go right ahead. We have international services. Fuck you. No, you don't. Yeah, uh, well, yes you do, I guess. But mm, 
I, uh, if he just would have spent 50 bucks for a Skype number, all problems would have been handled all at once. But, um, so anyway, be diligent about that. Now, the ability to keep in touch while here in Vietnam is tremendously easy. So I just wanted to be real clear about that. Getting uh, Wi-Fi is easy. Getting um, SIM cards is easy. Uh, using all these other services are rather straightforward. People who have um, iPhones are able to call anyone else with iPhones anywhere on Earth for free, FaceTime or otherwise. That's pretty sweet. Um, and things like that. So please uh, acknowledge that you can keep in touch with folks quite easily while overseas here. Booyah! Um, and yes, if you have any specific questions on that, Google it. If you have any more specific questions on it, ask me directly and I'd be happy to point you in the right direction. Booyah! So, cool. Next, um, okay, the, right here, um, doo -doo -doo, comparing life in different cities in Vietnam. Um, now, the big one is, uh, big cities cost more than small cities, period. Duh. Um, densely populated uh, uh, coastal resort cities that are directly on the beach that are in the top five on TripAdvisor are going to cost more. Duh. Um, uh, only speaking English and living with expats and staying at places that accept credit card is going to cost more. Duh. Um, as a quick example, I can get a maid service at my place, a maid to come over for a day, typically a grandma with a conical hat and a scrub brush, 200 grand for a day, okay, which is like eight bucks for a day. So she's working for a buck an hour, basically. Yeah. Now, in contrast, if you go to Saigon and you look up housekeeping services, whoo, you're talking like 1,200 bucks a month, put it in perspective, but they take credit card. So bear that in mind. Um, now, I think all cities uh, have something to offer, and it really depends on what you would like. Now, for a person who is kind of on this end, where they, you know, um, don't necessarily want to learn Vietnamese and have a Vietnamese-like lifestyle, I would say Da Nang is an excellent choice. You know, you're going to be, it's got an excellent community of people, it's got a lot of folks you can network with, etc., and it also has the ability to, um, uh, well, you can show up and hit the ground running, I think is a simple way of saying it. Um, you can do research ahead of time on what places to live and so forth, and uh, that's all going to be quite accurate. And yes, you could show up day one at one of the places you picked out with a credit card only and probably pull it off. So if you're just getting started, I think that this is, a, um, um, this is an excellent example. Um, and uh, showing you just one other super fast thing here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next, uh, I don't recommend living in large scale major cities. For example, Hanoi and Saigon. There's typically no reason to do so. Uh, to phrase this a different way, uh, there's no, you're not getting any practical benefit in many cases. It's just going to be big, dense, longer commutes, more expensive by a long shot, by a factor of three, and you're not really gaining much. Some people say like, oh, they got more to do, whereas Hue is a quiet, sleepy town. Okay, I disagree. First of all, there's no possible way you're going to be able to go to 10,000 coffee shops, brah, and that's a small town. So a lot of people who even move to, let's say, Hue or, uh, I'm sorry, Hanoi or Saigon typically live in one district and visit another in another district, and they never leave those two little lily pads. So the fact that it has 27 districts is irrelevant because they don't go to 25 of them. So there's really not a big reason to live in a large, a large city like that. Some people believe that, uh, hey, morning, Quentin. Good to see you, buddy. Intermission, getting a beer. Um, All right, let's go Heineken. So, yeah, um, yeah, and uh, uh, Quentin is a good example here. He's uh, been uh, living in Hui City with me, but also is able to contrast this with, let's say, living in China. Uh, we do have a great video that he and I uh, put together uh, on this note, and I'll see if I can, here we go. Um, and he had some excellent opinions on, um, here we go. Comparing, let's say, life in China, life in Vietnam, and that kind of thing. So this might point you in the right direction. 
Obviously, I'm stuck on Wei. Uh, I think it's tremendous. But uh, everyone's opinion is a little bit different. But uh, uh, for normal people, I'd say Da Nang is an excellent choice. Um, but from there, do your own homework, I guess. And once again, Google it or ask me directly if I could be of any further help on that one. No. Um, okay. This is uh, another big one. Okay. What's it like to actually leave your home? Okay. This is understated. When people talk about like moving across or retiring young and uh, moving across the country or moving across the globe to another country. Okay. This is a big thing. Okay. And a lot of people, the reasons that this is difficult. Number one, your family, your friends. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Quentin, you'd agree. Sure. Starter city. You don't have to, you don't have to lock into one city after all. Don't buy a house your first day, right? Rent, you know, check it out. Live in four or five cities. Mix the pot. You know, find somewhere you like. Shit. <laughs> um, right, right. Thank you, Nicholas. Yeah, I haven't seen any other experts saying not to move second heart. Right, right, right. Exactly. It's, it's popular, and then the more people that go there, the more people that write about it, the more people that, the more popular it gets, the more people that go there, the more people that write about it. You get stuck in this loop, and it builds itself up. Right. Um, so a lot of folks believe that those are the only two options. Hell, if you go on to Reddit, for example, yeah, I've actually seen questions. Which city should I move to? Hanoi or Saigon? Question mark. I'm like, bro, oh, man. Um, anyway. Uh, and I can also say from firsthand experience, I have at least a dozen friends that did live in Saigon or Hanoi. And then once they get to Way City, they're like, oh, you mean no pollution really to speak of? And it comparatively, you mean traffic is way milder? You mean I can cross town in 10 minutes? Perfect. Ah. This is great. Oh, you mean all of the other, or 90% of the other expats moved to Hanoi or Saigon or whatever, and only way less than 1% of expats moved here to uh, Hue City. So that means there's teaching opportunities everywhere, volunteer opportunities everywhere, and the prices are much lower. Perfect. Perfect. That's, I know, it's, it, it's not random that I'm living there, okay? I do wanted to be real clear about that. No, uh, hmm. Okay, Chad, again, jumping across the world. Friends and family. Let's go there. Because this is one of the biggest hangups or biggest roadblocks to people moving to Vietnam or for that matter, moving to any other country overseas. Okay? Now, funny, odd, irony time. Okay, irony time. I'm with my parents right now. More specifically, I'm in their room and uh, they are here in Ha Long Bay. Um, uh, means more work for teachers, so they think for this one. Right, right. It's, um, God. And, uh, no matter what, there's, uh, that's a lot of reasons to stay away, but, um, working at a software company, there's like no other expats that are working at software companies in Hue, so you're the first and only guy on the list. You're in. So there's a lot of neat stuff like that that makes things easy. Um, no, friends and family though, uh, what I wanted to point out is I, um, okay, when I'm back in America, how many hours per year am I actually looking my parents in the eye having a deep, intimate conversation in one way, shape, or form? It's not infinite, and it's not a thousand, okay? Maybe I'll see them, what, once a month? Let's just say we live in different cities, okay? Maybe over Christmas or Thanksgiving or a birthday or swinging through for a day, okay, great, great, great. Again, how many hours? Even at Christmas, for example. Don't say 100. Uh, is it 15? Tops? If it's a weekend ordeal by the time we're done. And seeing a movie together doesn't count. So how many times, how many hours per year? Okay, let's just throw something out there and say 150 hours a year. For example, everyone's number is going to be different. Cool. Well, they come here to Vietnam uh, once or twice a year. And when they're here, they have my full attention and I have their full attention. So now all of a sudden we're talking 
eight or 12 hours a day, back to back, seven days a week for two day or two weeks or three weeks or something like that, give or take. Uh, but by the time you're done with the math on all of this, ironically enough, I look my parents in the eye and see them more now than when I was in the United States. Isn't that weird? And when we're in the United States, we're a bit distracted. When we're here together, we're on the beach, having coffee shops, drinking beer on a rooftop, going out on a boat cruise on Ha Long Bay, or otherwise enjoying each other's company and doing fun stuff. Another way to say all this is our time is higher quality and we have more of it now than we did then. Furthermore, uh, I have a group chat where I got my uh, main family members, brother, sister, uh, their you know, girlfriends, boyfriends, uh, cousins, whatever, on one big Hangouts group or Facebook group. So we just schedule a time, um, Sunday night, um, uh, their time, and basically uh, chat together for like an hour. How's life, etc. When I was in America, we never did that once. So because I'm overseas, that causes us to want to uh, spend more time together and that kind of thing. So that's great. Mm. Um, so if you make a point, like let's say have a weekly phone call with your family or something like that, that can be something that you start to treasure. Um, yep. All right. Yeah. Crotal. <laughs> or Crow 2, forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Yeah, yeah, Viber, FaceTime, this is easy stuff. Download the app. I don't know. Just type into Google, voice over IP, free phone call service. You know, it won't take you long. Um, but anyway, it's delightful. Uh, video calls and all that. I, I've never video called my mom when I was back in the States. Why would I do that? But here we are. So it's great. Mm. Um, and, um, okay, next, people. The other big thing, uh, when you're jumping from place to place, debt, debt, okay? Debt is a shackle. Uh, if you're in debt, you owe money on a car. Uh, all right, Quinn, peace out, buddy. Enjoy your day, man. Um, the uh, debt, in, uh, if you're in debt, that's going to hold you back, okay? And I bring this up because, yes, while I was living in uh, Hue City, as an example... I, um, mm, I recall my life at that time. It was 60 bucks a month for rent, 60 bucks a month for food. Uh, and, uh, I don't know, maybe 60 bucks a month I spend on like renting a bicycle, you know, or something like that. And um, one way or another, I, you know, I'm under like a couple hundred bucks a month, basically, uh, to, to live in Vietnam. But because I was an idiot... Uh, I'm spending 200 bucks a month to live in Vietnam, but I'm spending 2,500 bucks a month on miscellaneous bills. And yeah, I got a credit card bill, the gym membership. I forgot to turn off uh, my phone bill. I forgot to turn off uh, the rent. I still have to pay on a house that I'm not living at. Ooh, uh, dot, 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 dot. So yeah, I'm paying all of this like ghost money, meaning money for stuff that I'm not actually able to enjoy or use or take advantage of in any way, shape or form. Admittedly, that was due to my the first three-month trip I made over here, so I didn't really know the ropes. Uh, and I was an idiot in a lot of ways. And I was an idiot because I racked up more debt than I should have. Um, and I entered into more long-term housing contracts than I should have. If I were to plan it a little better, I would have checked out of my house somehow uh, prior to leaving. Now... Uh, in order to be able to move long term and be more agile and or have your choice of living, be a digital nomad, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that residual bill number has to be as close to zero as possible. Okay, so the big one is get out of debt. I mean, if you're sitting with $200,000 in debt somehow and you want to move overseas, it's going to be tough. I mean, it just is. Uh, and I don't, obviously you don't want to like declare bankruptcy and get up. No, but do the right thing, you know, pay your debts, do what you got to do. So that's a big one. Now, uh, when it comes to bills and residual things like that, here's a cool thing. You're able to put more than you think on hold. A perfect example of that. I, uh, my car insurance, for example, here's an example of how it looked when I left and made this big leap financially speaking, you know, and obligation speaking. I actually printed off the last, I think I only was able to get six years 
of bank statements from, you know, Wells Fargo in my case. Every transaction that I made using my check or debit card, all of them for the last six years. Cool. I did the same thing with uh, PayPal and every other credit card I had at that time and so forth. Printed them all in paper, got out a highlighter. And that means like, what are all of my residual bills? Um, and there, there's quite a few and they're all miscellaneous. Like, um, and I got to decide, keep it, in which case prepay for five years or ditch it. How do I ditch it? Examples of this include, um, oh, ah, there's my car insurance thing. Oh, okay. Oh, with the phone number. Great. Call them up. Hey, I'm leaving on uh, December 15th and I want to just cancel coverage immediately. Oh, you mean I still have to pay for this last month, but then you can cancel after that? All right, perfect. Or, hey, I'm going to be leaving for four months. Can you just put my car insurance on hold? I'm not going to drive. And then, uh, and then just start it back up once I get home. Perfect. Thanks. Hey, uh, internet people, I'm not going to use my internet whatsoever while I'm gone, uh, and nor cable or anything. Can I just cancel service immediately? Yeah, great. Or, oh, can you just put it on hold for three months or four months or six months? Sure, great. Next. Uh, yeah, so your insurances, your gym memberships, call them up. So by going printing this all out on paper, you get a real clear picture of where your money's going and ultimately where to stop all the leaks. So, yeah, that took some time, obviously, but... By the time I left, you know, by the time my butt was on the plane with my one-way ticket here to Vietnam, my debt was zero. What I owe people is zero. Uh, the residual bills uh, are basically zero uh, and that kind of thing. That's incredibly important, incredibly important. And typically doesn't take that much time to, to arrange. So... Yes, my buddy uh, Derek, who flew with me, uh, and we went to Thailand together for like a month and a half. Uh, wait, Rob Foley, so assuming they're paying out Social Security when the time comes, does living overseas cause an issue? Can you still get your money? As far as I know, yes. As far as I know, they don't base Social Security benefits on residency. But with that said... Um, you're going to have a personal mailbox. I would assume that's what I would do anyway. And uh, you can just have, uh, and or they auto deposit social security somehow. In other words, how would they even know you're out of town, really? <laughs> but as far as I know, uh, that's a non-issue. And I say that you collect in the U.S. account. No issues. Are, yeah, exactly. I wouldn't think there's any issues at all because they auto deposit it. So, and they don't sit around and check. Like, oh, we need to look up this guy's passport. See, last time that that was stamped, I mean, coming into this, as far as they're concerned, they just send you the money and that's that. Really? Uh, there's nothing crazy about it. So that's cool. And it's not like you have to make some sort of broad declaration to the United States government that I'm leaving indefinitely. I never did. I never notified the, the government in any way, shape, or form. Um, so... Yeah, as far as they're concerned, I am welcome back anytime I want, and I'm probably going to come back sometime in the indefinite future. But most institutions, including like when I filed my taxes, let's just say, they had no idea that I wasn't physically in the United States. So, shit. <laughs> no, it's not worth worrying about. So, uh, so, Social Security could cover all your monthly expenses over there. I would expect, Rob. I really would. I mean... Uh, I'm telling you, you got $2,000 a month. You're laughing. Uh, I make it by on less than 800 for two people. Uh, if you got a thousand, I mean, for two people, it can be done, but again, you'd probably need some help and insight from a guy like myself to how to save money and whatever, but it can be done. Absolutely. Uh, so I would expect so if you've got uh, something as low as let's say three or $400 a month, it's doable. It's doable. Um, you may want to find some side work, I would imagine, which, again, I can help you with um, and stuff like that. But uh, it can be done, I guess, is a, a simple way of doing it. Um, even as low as 200 bucks a month, if that's all you got, it can be done. I mean, you're going to be one uh, either living with a family, eating rice and fish sauce. I mean, you're living with like a Vietnamese person, but it can be done. That is a simple answer for you. So, um, okay, yeah, um, 
there are a few things that are like residual kind of bills, which examples for me include my uh, Google, uh, like Google storage, 100 gigs. That's like one or two bucks a month. And they don't allow you to prepay for the whole thing. Uh, so uh, here's the strategy that I do that you all might find helpful. Do, 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 do. I go through this company, uh, abine.com here. Now, they do they, they specialize in privacy, password management, that kind of stuff. But the, the feature that I enjoy the most is um, they give you like a virtual credit card. So what that means is uh, they will generate a brand new credit card number and a fully legitimate credit card number of some kind. And then I prepay it all in one shot. So, for example, I take out my debit card or credit card or something, and then, all right, I'll top it up, so to speak, with like 400 bucks, let's just say. And, uh, and then I give that to, uh, let's say, Google or Apple or whatever, these residual places, Netflix, let's just say. And then I do the math on it. I'm like, ah, I probably go through about 10 bucks a month. This ought to last about 40 months. Okay, so in about three years... Let's just say, I'm gonna to wanna to top this up again. Okay, so then I put a little note in my calendar, three years from now, you might wanna add money to that card. You know, that kind of thing, right? But that's a way that um, I can both cover all of these residual bills that would otherwise come up every month, while at the same time, not have to actually do any work or no money is actually withdrawn from my account in any way, shape, or form. It's effectively prepaid. So if you imagine these uh, uh, cards as like um, effectively like buying a gift card, really, and hell, for that matter, you could probably accomplish the same thing by buying some sort of Walmart, you know, prepaid debit card would probably accomplish the same thing. But regardless, by doing that, again, the bills that I pay on a monthly basis, I want to be abundantly clear, is zero, zero. I pay zero monthly bills. I don't even have stuff on autodraft really, aside from, again, this prepaid debit card thing. So that's pretty sweet. And I bring this up as being important because, A, you hate to have money just, you know, draining from you uh, here and there. B, I tend to forget stuff and I tend to just kind of blow off my whole life in America, financially speaking, just blow it all off because I have nothing to pay or do. In other words, if my bank account was at zero, I'm good for months before I have to worry about anything. So that's kind of cool. Um, and that's another big reason, I suppose, for me personally that I wanted to move to Vietnam is the number of things uh, that I have to worry about is close to zero. To illustrate this, I could say really quickly, like, look, my life in America, what about the car insurance? I mean, is that all up to date and paid? Oh, okay, is that gonna be six month increments? Oh, okay, how long has it been since I last took it? So are they gonna be taking another $280 this month or next month? Well, better check. Uh, what about my uh, mailbox payment that I gotta be uh, making? Could that be made monthly, $120 a year? Okay, great. Now are my tabs up to date? Well, better check those. Okay, they're gonna be bad in May, so I better set an alert for that. What about like all that? Oh, okay, I gotta be paying my medical insurance, you know, this month here. Okay, what's the copay? Okay, da, 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 da. Uh, security deposit box got to be paid. What about the what about the uh, phone bill that's got to be paid monthly? How about the internet related thing? And then what about that? that, 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 that. Rent has got to be paid in person and by money order. And then this has got to be done by credit card auto bill. And then, you know, I, I handle that. It's fine. And it's not a, weird. I'm not unique. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying that there is like over a hundred things I gotta fuck with. Okay, I gotta. They gotta sit in my mind and I gotta worry about them. And at some point, I've got to spend like one or at least one or two days a month to just like go through the full list of a hundred bullshit things I got to worry about. And inevitably, I forget some like sign up for a gym membership that's on auto draft. You know, then I stop going intending to quit, announce I'm quitting, but then they keep charging me in the background. <sighs> OK, um, I uh, put a hold on my phone account for one month, but then they automatically turn it back on the following. OK, <sighs> you know. Man, I'm telling you, it's, you gotta experience this. Coming here to Vietnam, in my case, or anywhere overseas, if you get your bills to zero, your debt to zero, the shit you gotta worry about to zero. You're laughing.
it's hard to explain what that freedom feels like, okay? This is the winning ticket. The reason I love it here so much is I have effectively zero bills, zero. No credit cards, I don't have any credit cards. I have zero debt, I have zero shit to worry about. Zero things on auto bill and auto payment. I receive effectively zero mail at my house. I effectively pay all the taxes that I owe which is zero. Wow. No car payments, no taxes, no insurances, no... What's left? Freedom. Freedom. So, I, I focus on this bills thing because it's important. It's really important if you truly want freedom. If you retire and or travel long term while going overseas, but you gotta... But you like... Fling yourself awake in the middle of the night. You're like, oh my God. Or you can't sleep at night because, oh my God, maybe I forgot to pay this one bill back to this one person. Or maybe this debt is going to be over. Yeah, you're, you're, you're making the trip and making this experience less awesome than it could be. So, anyway. Uh, please, work as hard as you can on that. It seems like a lot of work to painstakingly go through every single bank statement. But it takes less than an hour. You know, and uh, really, and uh, and uh, pick out your main ones, make a handful of phone calls. Now, my buddy Derek, I was going to say, he came out for six weeks. Uh, I'm like, Derek, let's make our phone calls, man. Let's make our phone calls to all your little companies in America and put your stuff on hold. He's like, oh, no, it's too much work, man. I don't want to mess with that. Blah, 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 blah. I'll just handle it when I get back, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Derek. You're too rich, man. You think that money solves all your problems, but money in this case, because you 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 have a lot, makes you stupid. And money makes you stupid and makes you not care. And it makes you think irrationally. In this case, I actually had to like grab him by the neck, get the phone out, and actually we made some calls, yes, to his internet company, to his power company, to uh, his car insurance company, to uh, dot, 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 dot. All these different things. He ended up saving six or seven hundred dollars uh, in the course of that six weeks by putting a bunch of stuff on hold. Six or seven hundred dollars, and this took less than two hours, you know, to make all these phone calls. He thought I was an idiot and being overly paranoid and pushing and being pushy and weird at first, but after it was done, I'm like, bro, how much do lawyers make? Okay, you effectively got three hundred bucks an hour to make a couple of friendly phone calls. Pay attention to this, it's not small. It's not small. So anyway, that's a big one. Um, yep, uh, now when it, also when it comes to putting life on hold, um, yeah, I mean, everyone's situation is different. Uh, you're gonna, to be very clear, you're gonna have a lot of situations that are gonna happen as you leave, especially long term. Um, examples include, some of my friends are gonna get married and I'm not going to the wedding. So my friends are going to have a baby, and I'm not going to be there. My grandparents are going to die before I get back home, and I'm not going to their funeral. Um, Oktoberfest in La Crosse, for example, is a hell of a lot of fun, and I went every single year for however many years in a row. Terrific. I won't be there ever again, or into the indefinite future. Yeah. I mean, you know, your annual parties that you typically always hit, you're not there. Your corner bar that you like to see your buddies at and stuff like that, won't see you again. This is a big thing, and it ought to be thought about with it appropriate heaviness, okay? You will miss this, okay? And uh, missing it will come out in different ways. Maybe you can just be like, oh, Toberfest, whatever, that was a thing in the past. Okay, yeah, fine. But I tell you what, every now and then I have a moment. Like, I saw a picture of my brother in Lienerhosen, and I saw everyone there having fun, and I just saw that picture, and for whatever random reason, I broke down. I'm like, not because I'm sad, not because I want to go back, not because all these weird reasons, I'm human. I'm just, if I didn't give a shit, I wouldn't be human. This is, this matters. This is real. 
This is very real. Uh, you don't realize how many hundreds of people you know or how many events and how many things matter to you and socially speaking or people speaking and whatnot until they're gone. Now, the main advantage of, let's just say, people in the current state of the world, once again, Viber, Facebook, uh, FaceTime, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Take advantage of the technology. Okay. So a good example of this is um, when I have a family reunion back in, uh, back in the States. Well, I use some, an app called Marco Polo. Uh, okay. And it works like this. Uh, it's kind of like Snapchat, but with infinitely long uh, videos. So that's cool. So uh, they were to have a family reunion. So I'll record a quick video. Hey, Grandma, this is Brad here. Yeah, I'm in Vietnam with the wife. Just wanted to say hi. Hopefully this is going good and you enjoy Aunt Betty. And yeah, hopefully the flowers are going good. I'll look forward to pictures. Bye now. Hey, hey, Uncle Dave, it's been a minute. Good to see you. Da, 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 er, I, folks, you know, nice of Brad to say that. Can I reply? Oh, yeah. Boom. Hey, Brad, I got your video. That was wonderful. Nah, 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 nah. So uh, Marco Polo is not real time. That's cool. So people can re-listen to it as much as they want. Or my mom, for example, will show up and she'll maybe have a stack of 20 Marco Polo videos, all for me. Like, oh, this one's for Grandma. This one's for Uncle Dave. This one's for Uncle Lil. This one's for Uncle... Yeah. And, um, yeah, go around. Hey, this is from Brad. Great. Would you like to reply? Reply. Actually, check this out. I get, a, I get to interact with the whole crew out there beautifully. Yeah, I don't feel like I miss a beat. And for that matter, if I want to call in real time, I certainly could. Sometimes it's like 4 a.m. Vietnam time, but whatever. I'll get a case of beer. I'll be up for that. Sure. That's cool. That's really cool. I had a buddy of mine have a, a wedding in Minneapolis um, area. Yeah, and I called in for that. It was great. You know, like you get, I told him, get a set of headphones with a little boom mic. You know, plug it into the phone, oh, hello, and I can rap with anyone at the party there. Great. Um, see, she, see and share pictures back and forth. Yep. Um, Rob, excellent question. Short answer is yes. Um, at least once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. It's easy to do. I can round trip from, uh, do I travel to other countries? Uh, for example, I can round trip from here to the Philippines for like 250 bucks. I can round trip to Thailand for 150. Um, I can go to Laos and back for 40 bucks. Um, I could probably go to Cambodia, which are I'm, I'm listing neighboring countries, obviously. Uh, yeah, pretty quickly. Um, also, by the way, fun fact about traveling to other countries: uh, if you're really careful about flights and really smart about flights, and you're really patient. You can sit around and get like last minute deals. And sometimes they are sick, sick. Uh, I kid you not, one of my buddies flew from Da Nang. Ah, I'll answer that. Uh, one of my buddies flew from Da Nang to Hong Kong. Uh, I think it was $28 round trip. Fathom that number, 28 bucks. To go from Da Nang to Hong Kong and back. Hong Kong, no visa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, free visa, I should say. Yeah. So, not a lot wrong with that. Um, now, the Philippines, uh, comparing it, to be honest with you, I haven't actually gone there because I have no reason to. Uh, Vietnam, in my own opinion, is just superior in every... I've never been to a country in Asia that I would say is superior to Vietnam. If they existed, I would live there, okay? If Thailand was better, I would be there. If Cambodia was better, I would be there, but I'm not. Um, uh, the Philippines is, um, mm, okay, is it, is it more beautiful? Probably, who knows, but it's beautiful everywhere. Is the food better? Doubt it. Are uh, the women hotter, et cetera? I doubt it, but possibly, it depends what you're into, I guess. Um, but it's, it's way more expensive. Hey, Mr. Max, what's up, buddy? Um, so the, good to see you. <laughs> uh, mm, I wouldn't 
Uh, okay, for example, uh, I got a hotel here in Halong Bay, uh, which is a three-bed room and uh, with a big-ass balcony, etc. And the whole works. Um, hey, all right, Max. That's wonderful. Great. Um, we're, we covered a lot already, so you might want to see some earlier stuff, Max. We're kind of wrapping up a little bit, but still, good timing. Um, anyway, uh, to give you an example, I can get a, a big ass hotel room here for 300,000, uh, dong, which works out to like 13, 14 bucks a night, right, uh, at the Halong Bay itself, right next to the amusement park and the gondola cable car thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now in the Philippines, you don't expect to touch anything under 50 bucks a night, period. Okay. So. Hotel-wise, it's a huge contrast. Your bottom-of-the-barrel stuff in the Philippines is 50 bucks a night. In this case, uh, I'm currently at a five, or I'm sorry, a four-star hotel with full breakfast buffet, including sushi and yeah, smoked salmon and huge-ass rooftop swimming pool, full bar, free cocktail hour, and a deluxe uh, room here with one of them infinity shower things. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 45 bucks. This place in the Philippines would be $250 a night. Look it up. Look it up. Don't take my word for it. Just go to booking.com and look it up. But if you want to travel and cruise, that's, I, in some cases, it can be three or four or five times more expensive in the Philippines than here, to say it a different way. You can drink three or four or five times as much beer here for the same price. You could stay at a hotel that's three, four, or five times better here in Vietnam for the same price. So, yeah, that matters, frankly. So, yes, comparing uh, different countries out here, I think that that's a major factor. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, you're one of them there, Max. Sure, buddy, I'd be glad to field that. Um, okay, traveling to Vietnam and vegetarian. You are in luck, my friend. You are in luck. First of all, a fair uh, part of the uh, uh, population here, in fact, are, uh, are vegetarian to begin with. On top of that, one day a month in Vietnam is vegetarian day, which is to say, like, the whole country pretty well goes vegetarian all at once. Yeah. On top of that, um, Lord have mercy, there is, in Hue City, which isn't very big, let's say 300,000 people, I mean, there's more than 40, no, more than that, probably 60 vegetarian restaurants. Boom. On top of that, every, uh, yes, I could pretty much say every restaurant I've been to has vegetarian options. Rau, R-A-U. Yeah, man. And by the way, I'll write this in Vietnamese for you. Uh, mm -hmm. An chai, an chai, which means to eat vegetarian. It has a little hat over the A, but don't worry about it. It's just an chai. Um, yep. And so that's a very, very big thing. There's a lot of, uh, I used to live on a Dien Bien Phu street, which had four monasteries on it. Uh, right, let me back up. Two monasteries, forgive me. Uh, but regardless, there's monks walking around everywhere, and there was like three or four or five uh, vegetarian restaurants just on that one street. Oh, so it's a total thing, man. In fact, uh, I have a bunch of friends here who are vegetarians and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Um... Plus, uh, they smoothies and drinks and stuff like that is a huge thing out here. Uh, so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To give you an idea, oh, man, if you're a vegetarian and you got a dollar, one dollar, you're good to go, bro. I don't think you can eat four dollars of vegetarian food if you go to the right spot. But it's just too much food. Oh, yeah. Um, downtown by the tourist area, they got, they got it. In my neighborhood, they got it. Yeah, you'll have no troubles at all is a nice, short, simple answer, you know? Um, so yeah, that ought to work out pretty well. And then this is also true in Thailand, mind you. There's quite a few, um, Theravada Buddhists in, uh, Thailand that live their lives vegetarian style as well. So I think if you've ever been there, it would be comparable, you know, to that kind of an environment. Plus, uh... There's this website right here, uh, foodie.vn. Of course, it's by Vietnamese people and for Vietnamese people, which is awesome. And I think this is worth pointing out because 
A, they have food categories, as you might expect. You can kind of think of it about it like the Vietnamese equivalent of TripAdvisor for food or Foursquare or something like that. But, uh, yeah, you just type in vegetarian. Pfft, yeah, pick your city. You, yeah, you're good to go. But if you could also, for that matter, type in pizza or snails or fried chicken or whatever you want, and uh, uh, it's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, look that one up. Now, again, it is all in Vietnamese, but in our modern technology here, all you got to do is just auto-translate, you know. And, yeah, you could read it all in English pretty straightforwardly, um, that kind of thing. Also, it's worth pointing out, I don't trust uh, foreigners and white people in general that judge food and judge a place and that kind of thing. Um, ah, yes, Rob, I'd be glad to handle that. Um, I was just going to say real quick uh, that uh, mm, if white people or expats um, say that it's cheap, I don't really believe them because they don't have much to compare to. They might think like a $5 hamburger is cheap, but I think that's a ripoff. Also, if a foreigner says that this food is good, I don't really believe them because they don't have anything to compare to. Um, similarly, if they say this food is bad, I still don't believe them because maybe they just had a frog one time. Oh my God, there's a frog. I don't like this, right? I don't trust them. However, if a Vietnamese person who loves snails goes to the number one snail restaurant and says this is number one best snails in the city, I believe them. If a Vietnamese person who is ridiculously frugal says this food is cheap, you know for damn sure, it's really, really cheap. So yes, I trust Vietnamese people when it comes to food. They are better at it than most other countries, period. So yeah, uh, yes, learning the language. Um, first of all, I uh, here's what I can say. Start with the simple stuff first, okay? Uh, learn how to count to 10 first. Uh, if you don't have that, nothing else matters, okay? You gotta know how to count to 10 First, that's it. Then, um, actually, uh, beyond that, the, the top 10 list. Um, in fact, I'm going to send you a quick video on that right now. When I say top 10 list, I mean like the top 10 words that you need if you're uh, crushing it out here. Um, and I realize that this link that I'm sending you here is like how to party with the Vietnamese people. But... By definition, every single time you interact with anyone is kind of a party. And these cover things, um, uh, ah, these kind of things cover deals like, um, mm, mm. Uh, they cover a lot of things like, um, how are you? How, nice to meet you. Hey, eat up, drink up. Did you eat yet? Thanks. See you later. You know, things along those lines. So yeah, these are the things that you're going to say over and over and over and over and over again. So I made this video for folks that are coming to my wedding or did come to my wedding in Vietnam. Like, hey, if you know this top 10 list and nothing else, you're going to do great. You're going to get like 70, 80% of what 70 or 80% of folks say right away. So again, I guess my general idea would be like, start simpler, get the one to 10, get this top 10 list, start there. If you don't have this list, then uh, nothing else matters. The metaphor that I use is, doesn't matter how nice your suit and tie look, how, how perfect this is and how nice your hair is, if you are naked from the waist down, you look like an idiot. You look like an asshole. So people who claim that they've got their all kinds of fanatically awesome Vietnamese ability or any language ability, but they can't count to 10, they're fundamentally an idiot. Um, so anyway, start there. Um, let's see. Um, okay, uh, dialect. Look, people get way, way, way too worked up about the dialect thing. I see this a lot where people are like, especially, especially if they're foreigners that have never learned Vietnamese, but they nose around online and everyone's like, they read other things from other people that have never learned Vietnamese. Like, the North and South are so different. Blah, 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 blah. That is partially true, but it gets over-exaggerated, okay? For example... I get to even Vietnamese people who are like, um, oh my gosh, you learned in Hue City, Brad. You speak a Hue dialect. You go to the north, nobody will understand you. Bullshit. Bullshit. I, I'm up here in Ha Long Bay, which is in uh, Hanoi. Seamless. N uh, zero misunderstandings. I understood everyone perfectly fine. Um, I can go to Saigon and understand folks just fine. 
Um, if you're closed-minded, obviously this is gonna be tough. If your Vietnamese ability sucks in the first place, well, yeah, obviously it's gonna be tough. If you never practice, obviously it's gonna be tough. But look, it doesn't matter. If you learn like Hanoi dialect and then come to Hue City, you're fine. You know, um, people are going to understand you. It's fine. Um, similarly, if you're from Saigon and you move to, uh, you know, Saigon, yeah, they'll understand you. Um, you have to talk slower probably? Sure, that makes sense. But um, here's, okay, just to give you guys a quick example, okay? This is how radically different it is, okay? Um, just think about Z and Y sound, okay? So in the north, to ask right now what time is it, it'll be like Z, 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 Z. It'll sound like this. Beza, meza, zoi. Beza, meza, zoi. But you go down into the south, it'll be Y, Y, Y. Beya, meya, yoi. Radically different. No one will ever understand you. Yeah, bullshit. It's easy. Yeah. So in, uh, to ask what's your name, I could ask, uh, yeah, Banten Yi, Banten Yi, again with the Y sound, Banten Yi. But in uh, Hue City, they might be like a KY sound, Banten Ki. And in the north up here, it'll be more like a Z, Banten Z. So Banten Yi, Banten Ki, Banten Z. Radically different. No, it isn't. It's fine. Nobody ever once ever misunderstood me, ever. Mot Hai Ba Yo, Mot Hai Ba Zo. They're fine. There are some, I mean, individual words, you know, that are worth knowing by all means. Uh, but people argue that it takes years to learn, like, let's say, the Hui dialect. Totally disagree. Uh, here is a six minute and 49 second video right here about the Hui dialect. If you know this and nothing else, you know at all. Yep. Yep. In about seven minutes, you can bang it out. So it's really not a big deal. It is true that 90% uh, of the resources out there are going to have the Z sound and going to have the Hanoi sound to it. Sure, then learn that. Fine, whatever. And then just adapt and switch it to Ys once you get down in the South. Pretty easy. Now, I teach all three because I have a firm understanding on all three. So I'd be delighted to help you personally if that would be of any use to you. And that same goes for any of y'all. Uh, oh, and first lesson's free. So, yeah, call me up. You know, send me a message and uh, we'll get together for a couple hours and I'd be delighted to help you for free and get you in the right direction. If that's all you want, cool. We'll be good friends and call it a day. If you want more on that, great. It's like minimum wage and I'll take care of you. No, um, do I follow travel bloggers? Not much because I think um, it's not that interesting or entertaining to me, I guess. And I think a lot of them are... To be really, I'm going to be blunt here. I'm going to be real nice and blunt. Uh, I think uh, a lot of travel vloggers are full of shit and are stupid. I really do. Um, like, bro, you've been living here for three years and you can't count to fucking ten. All right, and you want to tell me about how, like, oh, I am the expert on this whole country. I know everything there is to know about the culture, people, and language. Yeah, yeah, bullshit. Yeah. Oh, I got a Vietnamese girlfriend now, and so that makes me an expert on life. No, it doesn't. Um, mm, or a lot of vloggers will just do stuff like, watch me eat a banh mi sandwich and watch me paint my nails. I don't know, I, that's not very interesting to me. Um, I can, uh, I mean, more power to you. Hey, if other folks think that's cool, go right ahead. I got nothing really against you, you know, or anything like that. But shit, uh, because I actually live here in Vietnam, to watch other people who are kind of idiots stumbling through doing, uh, uh, doing bullshit average everyday stuff is exactly that to me. It's average and every day. And I just think like, sometimes I face palm when I'm watching it. Like, like um, a woman will be like, do you want another glass of Nook Mia? Yeah, come on, what Nook Mia? No, aha. She's like, uh. See, foreigner speaks Vietnamese. Yeah, bullshit. You have no idea what's going on. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really do that uh, so much. Um, um, and, uh, also, I think in some cases, people can accidentally mislead folks. I guess, once again, let me be very clear here. 
there's one end of the gamut, which is live in the bubble, the standard expat cookie, cookie cut, you know, Mick English lifestyle. And then there's the total opposite end of the gamut, which is like live in the Vietnam or the Vietnamese wife speak Vietnamese every single second, never go to the expat area and da, 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 da. So I'm way over here. So when I see folks on this side, I just shake my fist at them a little bit. Like, bro, it, uh. um, when they're talking about cost of living out here, they're like, oh, watch me go and buy rice and cereal and pizza dough, you know, at this store. You know, yeah, look at this. Hey, look at the prices here. And I'm like, bullshit. I haven't set foot inside of one of those stores in two years. I go to the market, brah, and I negotiate in Vietnamese. Like, uh, to watch you go shopping is not interesting to me. I mean, because they think you're stupid and way overpaying, to be honest. You know, but whatever. I'm glad that they uh, got plenty of followers. And actually, on a positive note, they give a lot of folks a decent perspective on what the country's about and that kind of thing. So, yeah, they serve their purpose. You know, that's cool, you know, as far as that goes. Um, so, um, yes, uh, students from small villages. Yeah, actually, uh, it's the whole supply-demand thing. So, again, uh, going to downtown Saigon, for example, there's an ass load of, uh, uh, you know, teachers and expats and things like that. And also, while we're at it, there's plenty of opportunities for folks and so forth. English centers are opening all the time, blah, 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 blah. That's cool. Uh, but, again, it's very highly cookie-cut, and it's this end of the gamut kind of lifestyle. That's cool. This end of the gamut, nope, uh, totally independent. Hey, I can walk into a small town, which is, here's an example, Fubai. Um, this is where, it's just south of Hue City. This is where the airport is, you know, um, the Hue Airport. Um, but anyway, yeah, made some friends down there, and uh, turns out I'm the only white guy in the city. Yeah! woo -hoo! So what that actually means, and you could call it a village if you're so inclined, well, that means it's all on my terms now. I'm holding all the cards. Oh, and I'm bilingual, so I can talk with the kids in both languages. Yeah. So that means I get to choose the hours. I get to choose what days I want to work. And I get to choose how much I get paid. And um, any student that comes in occasion after class, um, um, I'll go downstairs and shake hands with the parents with a stack of business cards, obviously. And when I greet the parents, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm on, yeah, they call on, go, go, yeah, go, 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 Facing it that way, I get all kinds of teachers and people are like, oh my God, this is the first and only foreigner we've ever met that <coughs> ever, ever in history. Um, uh, oh, I covered that earlier, Max, if you if you scroll up, buddy, uh, uh, where I was talking about the bill stuff. Um, yeah, you'll find it uh, up there somewhere. Uh, putting your life on hold. Um, yeah, it's somewhere in the... 10.27 a.m. timestamp, but you'll find it. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, in that case, I get all, all kinds of teachers, and or not teachers, but people who are like, oh, you know what? Can we pile together four or five of our kids here and um, uh, and you can teach them all at once or something like that in a more private setting? Will there be a beer involved? Of course. All right, then. Yeah, actually, believe it or not, yeah, I teach with a beer in my hands. Yeah, like in my school in Fubai, yeah, they, they give me like two or three beers a class. And, I, and I'm like, that was one of my things, too. I want to be able to drink beer while I'm teaching the kids. You know, and they're like, oh, sure, here you go, sir. Yeah. Oh, man, I love it. So, yes, it's a teacher monopoly kind of environment. So, yeah, I, let's be clear. I did not find these folks online. They don't exist online. You never will find them online. Let's also be clear. If I would have gone to Hanoi or Saigon, I would have never met them. Let's also be clear. If I didn't speak Vietnamese at all for shit, can't count to 10 or greet anybody, I never would have met them, never would have contacted any of the parents and kids, and wouldn't be nearly as effective of a teacher as it stands. And uh, finally, I wouldn't be able to demand, you know, what I want to demand and what I need to demand and that kind of stuff. 
No. People are going to get up on my pay or get their panties in a knot and be like, well, Brad, you don't have a work permit. You didn't sign a long-term contract with them. You didn't follow this uh, rule. And technically, you're on a marriage visa. You're not allowed to technically work. It's fine. <laughs> Two of the cops in Dubai, their sons learned with me. I mean, it's fine. So don't worry about it. Mm. Plus, if the cops were to ever walk in, I could just be like, no, I'm just volunteering here. Prove me otherwise. And they'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah, um, so, yeah, the, anyway, um, that's all pretty nifty stuff. Now, the zero bills thing, yeah, I did lay it out uh, in a bit of detail, um, but in short, it's, yeah, uh, I did lay it out on the uh, forum there, if you want to check it out there. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll find more details on that a little bit later. Now, um, okay. Next, uh, and we're kind of wrapping up eventually here, but, okay, child care, getting late. All right, cheers there, John. Good to see you, buddy. And uh, we'll see you around, my friend. Yeah, yeah, and thank you for your insight on the forum. You, you had uh, some tremendous answers uh, to some very technical and difficult and important questions. So thank you for those. That was very, very helpful of you, buddy. Cheers. Um, uh, I did want to mention uh, renting grandmothers. Yeah, renting grandmothers. This sounds like a weird idea or weird thing to bring up. Um, but uh, I, with regards to child care um, and stuff like that, just to pick that as an example, renting grandmothers or renting an aunt or renting a live-at-home nurse or renting a sister, something like that is totally a thing. I guess technically we would use the word hire, but yeah, to give you an idea, my brother-in-law, uh, meaning my wife's brother, uh, here in Vietnam, there was an elderly grandmother who lives on the countryside who's um, a widow, kids are grown up, and she's lonely. Well, they just pay like $200 a month or $250 a month, and then said grandmother lives in their house. Not as like a slave employee worker, but helps them take care of the baby. Cool. So grandma gets to like effectively live with a new family and have a new baby and give her meaning for her life. Sweet. Uh, we'll keep the place reasonably tidy. Presumably cook a little here and there. But otherwise have a family and have meaning in their lives. Whereas uh, the uh, my brother-in-law and his wife can go to work normally and have zero concerns of any kind. Life is good. This is a thing. So, for people who have families and or have elderly people in their family or want to travel here with folks that need one-on-one uh, -on -one attention and that kind of thing, totally can do it in Vietnam. Child care is so cheap, it's damn near free. So, uh, bringing that all in mind, uh, a lot of folks who otherwise are going broke in America, uh, they, like, Cost of child care is higher than the wage I get at my job. Damn it. Um, oh, you're not able to take care of babies who are under the age of two. Damn it. Oh, and I only get two weeks maternity leave. Damn it. What do you do in between two weeks and two years? Damn. Vietnam, non-issue, bro. Non-issue. You can have a live-in person. You can... Drop them off during the day, non-issue. And it'll be way less than a buck an hour for sure. Um, coming in to clean your house and stuff like that, yeah, it's about 10 bucks a day. Uh, so that's pretty useful. Um, actually, if this were to interest any of y'all, uh, I'm just going to post this here. Um, uh, different uh, things that I have written, or written up before. And along the way... Um, yeah, renting grandmothers is one of them. So, yeah, this is a really, really important, or um, I think a game changer, really is. I recently saw a video, and I made a link to it on the uh, uh, post here on, um, on Reddit, how uh, retirement is disappearing for a lot of people in a lot of countries. And I guess this is kind of where I want to end it here with you all. That's a fact. For a lot of people, their pensions are not able to even pay for their rent, let alone pay for a reasonable lifestyle. It's ideal if you can have a lot of savings. It's ideal, but not everybody does. It's ideal if you're debt-free, but not everybody is. Um, it's ideal if you're a millionaire, but not everyone is. Look, life can be easy. 
It can be easier. It can be if you do it right. So again, I'd be delighted to offer as much help as I can to any of y'all, even if I can offer just one person, give one person the advice that changes one person's life. And I have to, I'm at this week after week. So be it. We won. Okay. We won together. So I'd love to help any of you guys, uh, guys and gals, of course, uh, everybody um, from any country, anywhere. If there's anything I can do for you, language, help you get integrated, answer any questions, etc. cetera, um, I'd be delighted. So anyway, I'm going to keep up with uh, Ask Me Anything here once a week, you know, and let's just see where it goes, huh? <laughs> But anyway, uh, I'm in Hong Long Bay, like I said, so I'm going to meet the parents and uh, get more beer. Mm. Go and make it happen. Yeah, you bet there, Max. Glad to help, buddy. And um, thank you guys for your great questions and great support. Um, you too there, Rob. Appreciate it. Um, yep, Quentin, good seeing you. Um, Christopher, good as always. Thanks, buddy. Uh, always love hearing from you, and I love hearing your enthusiasm. So, yeah, sweet man. Well, we'll see you next time, Rob. Don't be afraid. Around this same time ish, huh? <laughs> yeah, and again, comment any further questions. Maybe I'll give her a little bit of a review of what uh, How Long Bay is like, you know, if you guys are so inclined. So, mm. sweet y'all. Well, stay radical. All right. Stay radical. Have fun. You know, and keep that open mind, and uh, keep your eye on the prize. Cheers, y'all. Yeah, peace, man. <laughs>